Welcome to my talk show. I'm your host, That One Rebel here. Back with again. Oh sorry, back again with another interview. Uh, I appreciate everyone for stopping uh, by to watch me the interview today. We have another special guest for you today. It's been nice coming in again. Uh, one of my good friends I've known for a while. So hopefully you guys uh, enjoy today's show. So I, I, I tripped up because the the sub. <laughs> The, the Twitch sub messed me up. Thank you, Alfred, for the sub. Um, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Anyway, without further ado, let's introduce our guests. Coming from behind the curtains. Manice. Hi, Rebel. How's it going today, bud? Oh my good, God. good. <laughs> What's happening? Good stuff. Where? I finally oh, made yeah. it. I yeah. finally yeah. made it. Add to my yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you love to <laughs> sit next to me. Subscribed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me, let me, let me pop a squat really quick here. Oh my god. I got you. Yo, unholy burn. Yeah, thanks yeah, for the yeah, tier yeah. one. I appreciate that. There we go. Oh, you really, you really got nice seats in here. They're actually like, oh, like yeah, memorable. They're comfortable. Yeah. Thank comfortable. you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Even you got your little mug. Can you buy these? Can that's what ones? everyone says. One day, one day, you be able to. You to Actually, I'll I'll let you on a secret. This. I'll, I'll tell I you. Want this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you on a little secret. When this world's actually updated, when you'll see it, the there's the, each yeah. mug in the map is different with a different logo, and it actually has coffee and it has steam coming out of it. We have we we have the technology. <laughs> we have the technology. You know. It's here. This is the future, you know. Like this is this is yeah. the reason. Less than you know, two like, months. Like yeah. We, we, yeah. This is this is what fighting for freedom is all about, right yeah, here. Exactly. So we can come in and drink virtual coffee and be anime girls yeah, at absolutely. the same time. I mean, that's what, what else do you want, honestly, in VR chat? I mean, yeah. This is this is this is next level stuff. Sao can scoot over. We're good. Oh, yeah, we beat yeah. true, it. True, true. So. Yeah. Uh, my first question is a very obvious question, but how are you doing today? Are you are you feeling good? Are you feeling great? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. And pretty good's a lot better than not too bad. So, okay, not too bad. And not okay. too bad's a lot better than not too bad. We'll uh, we'll start some. Not too good, so, we'll yeah. start some softball questions. You know, some easy stuff. Sure. You know, a, a very basic yeah. question I always like to ask is always typically a different answer. And that question is, well, how did you end up playing VR chat? Why are you in this game? What happened? You know. <laughs> um, I actually the main the main reason I ended up in VR chat was back in ye olde days, um, end of 2017. I, I'm in a, a gaming clan, uh, mm -hmm. dirt company or a, a gaming community, and we were looking for a game where we can host meetings in, mm -hmm. and. Someone came up with, oh, there's there's this game called VR Chat, and it's we can all just sit in a board meeting and we can plan things out and all this and actually be more face to face. And I had a, I had my my first tokens. VR headset was actually a, a, a wedding <laughs> present, so I've always had VR since like mm -hmm. 2015. Holy crap! Um, and they were just like back, you know, when when VR Chat first came out. If you had a VR headset, that was like. You're the oh cool guy. God. You're, you know, the, you're like the cool that, that kid. Was a big, that was a cool guy. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we, we did that for a little bit, and then it didn't really stick. But, and then I kind of, like, dropped the game for a bit. But then a couple months later, the Ugandan Knuckles kind of really took off. Mm -hmm. And for a while, I bumbled around. I bumbled around. I first came to VRChat, like, long term. <laughs> As a Ugandan Knuckles. And it, uh, oh, it was all downhill from there. Yeah. yeah, that's what do you mean? It's all uphill from there. What do you mean? What do you ever since <laughs> Knuckles, dude? It's like it's like a steep, like you know, like a rocket. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it, it goes up. It's a roller coaster, really. You know, mm -hmm. one one minute you're uh, clicking around, the next minute you're. Uh... Yeah, I think that's about as far as that needs to go. <laughs> yeah. Good times. Oh, yeah. Good times. Good times. Good times. There, there, yeah. There's something really yeah, like nostalgic. Stuff. I don't know if you ever. There's worlds and there's like stuff where it's like the original VR chat intro and stuff. I yeah. don't know if you ever been to them or like listen to the old like intros, uh, music and stuff. It's like there's something really nostalgic about like early VR chat, like 2018, like that that going to guy at night. Yeah. You know, bumbling around with a couple friends, bumbling around in some public worlds. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's, it's, 
I, I, I love the scene now. It's a great scene. It's a really high energy scene, you know, where you go. It's just, there, there's like, it's, it's like a different flavor of ice cream. Both are enjoyable. You'll get a brain freeze every now and then, but like, it's, it's good. I like it. I, I miss the old flavor, but I'm, I'm fine with strawberry over chocolate. You ever uh, uh, look up like the really old VR chat videos from like 2015, 2016? <laughs> oh, like like the alpha build? Yeah, those days. I I can't say I have, but now I'm going to. They're on YouTube. I have, I have a new Google. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> They're uh, it's it's I'm an experience. Scared. It's it's it, it's like a time capsule because there's like no anime avatars, and you have like these like random like. VR like tech enthusiasts are like man. Since Anymar just subscribed. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, some some people will have like they'll be like T pose. Like the first video is like it, it, they're in like a cafe. You can still go to it. It's like the first VR chat world, and and, and it, all it is is like some dude like a, it's like a T pose avatar. It doesn't even have animations, and then everyone's just T posing, and they're all just like, shit, I can't can't T pose, but you know they're they're like. Yo, what's going on, guys? What's up, guys? I'm from Australia. Oh. I just subscribed with Twitch Prime. Yeah, actually, no, I have seen that. Like, you couldn't change avatars. You were stuck as like the the default Unity um, T pose guy, or whatever like, avatar. Yeah. yeah, the T pose guy, and people are just floating around like statues. I think actually I have seen that. That that rings a bell. <laughs> oh man, that, that's wild. Though. I mean, it's definitely early, early days like that when it's just an alpha build. It's straight yeah. just a oh, proof of concept, you know. Oh, there's a lot of you. It's... That's okay. Mm -hmm. I can like, look, we can make a multiplayer ones. VR hangout world now. From here, where, mm -hmm. where can we, where can we go from it? You know. Yo, thanks for the. There's definitely a lot to learn. Yeah. Um, so. I've so I looked at others like later videos and like the progression. And there's like meetups, and it was like VR Pill and like Tupper, not Tupper, but like VR Pill and like Ron or something like that doing like a meetup. And they're like, hey guys, welcome to VR Chat's meetup. And it's like 10 people, and they're, and they're all on desktop, and like one guy's in VR, like, what? Look at my hands, bro. <laughs> Look, oh. And then everyone's like, yo, can you dab? They're like, can you dab, bro? The guy's like, yeah, bro. And they're like, what the? F <laughs> they're like, what? <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, I remember that, like, early, yeah, it's like, I mean, I, I really kind of got, a, you know, the, the VR addiction, like, 29, or 18, you know, like, spring 2018, like, like, a lot of people did, and, you know, you go in, you go into, like, a public world, and 99.9% .9 of everyone mm. is in desktop, Yeah, and then you come in, and you you can flail your hands around, and people are just, they just have their mind blown, <laughs> It got even crazier, like, the first time you ever saw... Do you remember the first time you ever saw someone in full body? Yeah. Though the first time I ever saw someone in full body, I didn't know that they were in full body. I actually have a, re a recording of it. It was uh, Mr. Me back in uh, December of 2017. And he was sitting on a rock. And I didn't know that he was actually in full body. I just thought, like... Because when you sit in a chair, like, it forces your legs to sit. But he actually was slightly yeah. moving his legs. I didn't notice that. The first... Real time that I actually noticed was about a week or two later was Spaz Koga. And basically, um, he was full on like moving his feet and he had a, an avatar where he'd be like 30 feet tall or something like that. And then like it was like a meme avatar where basically he was eating cereal, but the cereal, like the like the chunks of cereal were like you got in knuckles and shit. Oh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, what oh the God. fuck? And then he was just like, he had like animations where like he'll have like a cooking pot and he's like stirring it. And then like we looked inside the pot, just a bunch of you got in knuckles and like dead unity chans and shit. And we're like, what the fuck? And he's just eating it. And just, I'm just like, what is this game? <laughs> just just an absolute, just, just meme circle jerk. Yeah. Basically, that, going, that, that VR meme. That was like the first time I ever saw like memes in VR chat. Everybody else was typically, hey guys, I'm Unity Chan. And you're just like, yeah, okay, bud. I already seen that like 50 times. But now, like, yeah. seeing someone actually, like, like in real time, be like, you remember those you, annoying you got in knuckles you just saw like five minutes ago? Yeah, I'm just eating them, bro, like candy. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> that was, that was oh, the real, man. that was the first real moment for me. <laughs> You know, seeing stuff like that. But anyway, um, so you got into VR chat. You know, it, it was a wedding gift, like you said. Um, and then you started playing in like December of 2017. Um, okay, and you've been playing for, for since then. 
But uh, how did you gonna end up getting into like uh, streaming? Like uh, you played for many years before you started streaming. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's um, that's a long road. Mm -hmm. I've been I've been content creating for since 2006. Oh, so shit. how many years has that been? Uh, that's uh, 15. That's 15 years. Yeah. 15 years. So yeah, almost almost as long half the time I've been alive. Dude, I've, I've been that's like making that's making longer content. than most people who played this game. Like most people in this game are like ten. I know, right? <laughs> Fuck. But no, yeah, I, um, I started back and then. I I, was, I did a lot of cartooning. I did a lot of like drawing and stuff, and I really enjoyed it. I just like like making things, you know, little comics or all that kind of stuff. And a lot of that's all been kind of purged. I don't really have any of that online in DeviantArt or anything anymore. But then um, I moved to YouTube, where I originally started making. Um, like you know how to draw whatever things and that didn't really go anywhere and then i i did a little like this and that and the other things and you know that got bumbled around a bit and then i started like making like minecraft came out that was that was uh minecraft came out um so i got into that 2009 I yeah, think. Some, something like that. I started doing that, and you know, like no one else, no one else was like straight. This was like basically before Markiplier and all that, you know, and that yeah. took off pretty dang well, mm -hmm. uh, and all that. But I and um, but that I kind of let go away. I became the multimedia lead for uh, Derp Company again. The the gaming the, that's the 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 the. Um, the logo that's on my chest is the Derp Company logo. Mm -hmm. um, I became their multimedia lead, and we did a lot for uh, Planet Side promotion and stuff. Um, we were making uh, can uh, head cannon lore, uh, making promotional videos, making a very successful gaming outfit in it. Became and then it moved on to a full gaming community, and all this stuff. Uh, and after seven years of that, I. I stepped down and started focusing again on making my own content, which is roughly where I'm at now. So I kind of, I I stepped out from from playing Planet Side and came out in Anime Girl. So I, the the average, the you know the average, yeah, kind of the, the redemption so. story. You know, we were all boring, and then we just woke up and we we're just like, I want to be an Anime Girl, and then you just you know, yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. But I mean, yeah, it's. It's it's a long road and it's it's a long and you know yeah it's, it's a long road basically it's I've, I've been at it a while and all those kinds of things and I'm I'm happy where I'm at now with you know all, all my community and everything we have a really good time and mm -hmm. I, I like doing what I do I like you know I I make I make all the kinds of content I can mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of stuff on Twitter and different stuff on YouTube and. The main reason I guess I just do it is I just I just love create I just love creating I just I love to make people laugh I like to make people you know I, I just I just like to talk to people I think is really the big thing um, I, I get a lot of people that you know it, mm -hmm. it's a mix between I love to talk and then you get a lot of people saying you know man shut up <laughs> for like five minutes please but no it's, but no it, it, it's a lot of fun um, you just kind of you make you give yourself a mindset, you know, where you you constantly have to be creating. You you feel almost wrong if you're not, if if that makes sense. I'm sure you feel the same way, you know. You you just you get into a, a mindset that a certain mentality of just constantly trying to to better yourself, trying to constantly just keep just keep throwing, you know, just letting the world know you exist, kind of a thing. No, I got you what you're saying. Like, we all enjoy I love talking to people. I mean, I literally run a talk show, so I guess it makes sense, right? Yeah, I guess. It'd be kind of weird if you didn't like to talk to people when you ran a talk show. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Listen, there, there are people out there that do things they don't like, you know, when they play Fortnite and then they secretly hate it and they do it for the money. You know, there are people like that. Oh, just... I mean, yeah, I guess you're right, but... I'm not like one of those people. Someday. I assure you, I actually enjoy talking to people. Anyway, <laughs> um, uh, well, uh, sorry. What was your? Do you remember your first streams on Twitch or for VR chat specifically? Do you remember any like the first moments of your streams? The first VR chat stream. Yeah. Um. Oh man. 
trying to remember what the first one happened. I didn't. Know. I don't think I knew what I was doing. Because mm-hmm. VR Chat's a VR Chat's a very weird game to stream. You know, because like I, you think of any other game, it gives you usually a goal, um, something to work towards, something something to do. You know, there's yeah. a story, there's a plot, there's there's highlight, there's content. VR Chat is just. I'm standing here. How can I make this kind of an entertaining thing? You know? So I, I can't honestly remember the first things I would have done in VR. Probably a lot of, you know, just I can't remember. I used to do I used to do just dance worlds. I know I used to do that. Um, but then, you know, Twitch kinda got all kind of floofy with um dcma and playing copyright music so i kind of stopped doing that for a while where yeah well that so i i would do like i would do dancing and stuff on stream um i would i'd bumble around with friends we did a lot of we do well still to this day i do a lot of like community maps we do a lot of like horror maps um all that kind of stuff because that's always the big thing i always i really love doing i'm, I'm a variety i'm a variety content uh creator but like I specify, I'm a, I'm a horror variety content creator. So if, it, if it's a spooky game, I, I've played it, or I'm going to play it, or I want to play it, or it's broken. <laughs> it's broken. Sounds like yeah, me when I'm playing uh, um, Cry of Fear last night. That game crashed like 15 yeah, times. I, w- I was gonna say, I was gonna ask you, how was that? I I really enjoyed. <laughs> Anyway, I really enjoyed Cry of Fear. Did, how's it going for you? I'm uh, five hours Outside in. Of, yeah. So I'm like halfway through the game, I think, at this point. And the only yeah. issue I have is just like the backtracking and then the, the, the crashing every so often. And like they like, take away mm. your phone battery. And it's like, well, you can't see anymore. And I'm like, I had to turn up the Gamba. I'm like, I'm just going to turn up the Gamba so I can actually just see in the game. <laughs> Like I can't, I can't deal Spoiler, with this. Shit. You do, you do, you do, you do find another battery. Oh, I it's found like it eventually. Yeah, right yeah, yeah. It, it was, it okay. was on the. I forgot. I didn't even know they gave it to me without even realizing. I just walked away, came back later. I was like, "What the fuck is this on the ground?" Oh, a battery for my phone. <laughs> that, oh. That's a really old granddaddy horror game. It's for what it is when it was made is really good. You got to remember, this is like when was that game came out? Two thousand five, four. Something like that. It was like, that was, because it was a mod. It was yeah, a CSGO Half-Life. mod before it was a game. Yeah. Or a Half-Life mod, I'm sorry. Um, but, yeah, it, it's come a long way, and it's it's really good. You ever play I the mean, original? What, like, what it is. Look, oh, the mod? Uh, the, um, the the original one was, uh, the one that, the prequel was uh, Afraid of Monsters. Oh. I can't say I actually have, though, but now I want to. I believe it's made with the same guy. It's more, um, so Cry of Fear has like almost all its own assets, but then when you play uh, Afraid of Monsters, it's like, it looks like just like a Half-Life map, but sort of, it, it has like a oh. similar feel of like, you know, you don't know what the fuck you're doing, like you just wake up in a hospital and you only have like a kitchen knife and there's a bunch of monsters. They're like, the weird thing about what made Afraid of Monsters was that like your flashlight has batteries and you have to keep picking up batteries and the ba- like the flashlight's shit. Can't see nothing, yeah. and all the all the enemies are just retexture like Half Life One zombies. But like, the weird thing that made them really creepy was the fact that they uh, increased their animation speed for the head. So the spe- so the head's like fucking like twerking out oh, like crazy. Out. Yeah, that's what made it scary. <laughs> like these things are coming towards you, and they're like, Ugh, like fucking like jittering like crazy, you know. So. Yeah, old or old horror games before like like the standard like there's 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 a, for the most part triple A horror games they're they're kind of few and far between because they're a really niche kind of community compared to like a first person shooter which they know is going to sell you know billions of copies kind of a thing mm-hmm. you know Resident Evil seven and eight did a really good job at kind of coming back and making a a good kind of callback to proper horror but you know you think like. Like I'm sure you've played Amnesia, like games like that, yeah. like that really kind of set the 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 standard for like a horror, because like like Amnesia kind of really this whole idea of like hiding from the monsters before, because before before that it was all about you know like even Silent Hill, uh, Resident Evil before and all that's just kind of you just kind of slog through it, yeah, you know, beat them down, yeah. 
Yeah, basically. So, I, it, it's it's come a long way. It it really has. As more of the horror becomes more psychological, VR definitely is taking that to a whole nother level because you know as well as i do you're not in front of a computer monitor anymore the monster can physically like suck on your face yeah <laughs> it's... yeah that's why i feel like when i play uh, all these like uh vr chat horror maps you know like they're really like literally in my face mm -hmm. they're trying to try yeah. to get you i think the the most scariest part for me uh was in uh, made by official say on the guy who made Huggies Dungeon for people in the chat and stuff like that. So Huggies Dungeon is a very popular horror um, series, but he also made a, like a side thing called uh, I think it's called WDKS or WKDS or something like that. It's basically four different like horror campaigns, and uh, each are like an hour or so long. I think the first one starts like in a, in a hospital, and you're struggling through, and it's just like covered in blood or whatever. But uh, minor spoiler ahead. But uh, at the very end of it, uh, you're standing there and you're like, what, "What am I doing?" And then out of nowhere, the like sort of like the Grudge Girl, sort of like in uh, Phasmophobia when you die, like the the hands come across your face, but instead it comes from above. Yeah. And then they go like this in front of your face, and it scared the shit out of me. Like that was true horror. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, the build. Just, yeah. There's just the build. I mean, the biggest. Like, I think one of the biggest things that makes a good horror game is it's the build up. You know, like jump yeah. scare. A jump scare here and there ain't bad, but like a, a good horror game needs that suspenseful build where you know, you come around the corner, and you don't know if you're gonna be scared or not. If it's gonna be uh, you you can tell something's gonna happen. Basically, oh, so like, you know what I mean. Phasmophobia. The build. Like kind of yeah. Like phasmophobia is a good is a good um a good way to put it because you know you know things are going to happen you know they're going to happen it's going to be violent your friend is probably going to get touched and it's, <laughs> it's um, touch day you just don't know exactly when yeah 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 i got nice. the haptics i got the face haptics for phasmo i i don't know if they patched it in this new update they didn't work in the last one Wait, what? But yeah, the they, ghost actually uh, you have haptics so if that ghost touches you feel on your headset like vibrating yeah, it, it physically. Oh, shit. That's scary. It, I have face haptics. Um, it's it's pretty wild. It's 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 definitely a nice little niche thing. Um, it, it's a good little gimmick. It's pretty funny because all of a sudden you be in a room and the ghost all of a sudden will do something and all of a sudden you just feel like a hand just or something like brush past your face and you're just like. <laughs> shit, dude. I don't know if I could install yeah. that. Get that going. That sounds scary as fuck. Oh, it's it's so worth it. There's there's nothing good like screaming like a girl for a little bit. You ever use it in VR chat? Someone just walks right through you. You're just like, oh my body! Why'd you walk through me, dude? <laughs> I don't I don't have an avatar that has haptics on it yet. It's on the list of things I need to get. I would love I would love for people to actually physically head pat me or like you know like mm -hmm. anything like that and physically feel it. I don't have a vest, sadly. I don't. Have, it's only on my face. Oh, but, okay. You only get the head one. I get yeah. you. Yeah, I'm not that. I'm not that rich. <laughs> I feel that's why I tell my chat every day. I'm not that rich, guys. You gotta relax. I'm not that rich. I'm not that rich. Oh my gosh. I'm only ranked nine thousand four hundred. Right? Only ranked nine thousand four hundred. Okay, on the Twitch leaks, dude. Ple plebeian, right? Yeah, I'm fucking. For now. Not even. For now. I'm over nine thousand, but you know, not even under nine. Yeah. You know, fucking hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Keyword. Remember, always had the word yet. Yes, yet, yet. Yet. So I'm not under nine thousand yet. <laughs> tell me uh, about your avatar. So uh, how'd you come up with the idea of wanting to be like a, a demon? Succubus. Uh, I I originally ran around in VR chat. Like I said, it's like a Ugandan knuckles, and then I went on to a Unity Chan, and then um, I was I was Monica from DDLC mm. for a while. Yeah. But I used to always end up back in this MMD dance world. Uh, it was back in the day, the MMD nightclub. And, like, yeah. everyone was always in the MMD nightclub. And there was the Akuma Miku on the, um, always up there. And I always really liked the design of the Akuma Miku. And for a long time, I ran around as an Akuma Miku. Um, but it never felt like something that was me you know mm -hmm. like it's everywhere you know like it was cool like all of a sudden you know someone would be like oh i saw your avatar it was over here and i was like no it's just it's kumamika it's not me but uh i wanted i wanted something 
that I kind of could vibe with that was was similar, but I wanted to make it 100% my own, you know? So, I, I mean, outside of having white hair and red eyes, there's not much really that's the same anymore. Um, but it's, it's basically where I came up with the idea was just to have an, just a... This, this, I always really love avatars that don't, or like designs that don't have human skin colors, if that makes sense. You okay. know, you see like a lot of succubuses or whatever, like red, like Miru has, you know, like red skin, or you'll see a lot of like other people who have like just, they're, they're you know, they're, they're Pascal, Pascal women, all that kind of stuff. And I just really kind of like the off colors. So I was like, oh, you know what? I, I like the, the solid white skin, all that kind of stuff. Like it, it's different. It's unique. Um, it's def it's my own and it just kind of stuck and it, 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 it more along that line <laughs> and then I um, I used to be a part of a lot of well I still am part of a lot of dancing clubs communities party groups and all that kind of stuff um, mm -hmm. where there was a while I actually wasn't um, for a, a couple months where I was, I was doing like different avatars and stuff, and people kept going like, "That's not Manus. That's not. Get out of here. That's that. No, you have to be, <laughs> you have to be an Akumiko." So, uh, you know, it's it just kind of became iconic to me, and I just wanted to do something that I can call my own. And I just I love short hair and I love red eyes. I mean, I, I, have, I have this really love hate relationship with red eyes. It's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I have a really bad phobia of glowing red eyes in the dark, but but I have glowing red eyes, and it's I'm I'm like Batman of of my own my own phobia is my my thing. I, I don't know. It's it's really weird. It's really fucky. I hate it. <laughs> and people tease me with it all the time. My Halloween avatar, um, my avatar creator made random glowing red eyes, like beady red eyes, just kind of sit around in like the off distance, and it it, it it screwed with me for a couple days. It was pretty bad, but I'm I'm getting better with it. It's it's probably for the best because you know it's one of those things where the more you confront it, the more you get used to it, and the more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, if I know I'm expecting it, it's not too bad. It's when all of a sudden it's just like, you know, pow, and there it is. Yeah. Kind of screws with you. Phobias are weird. That's true, yeah. There's there's yeah, a, there's a lot of people who experience phobias in VR chat. So besides red eyes, do you have any other phobias? Not not really. Um, I Well, I mean, outside, that's, that's the only weird one. I mean, I, I mean, I have, you know, the fear of like... The fear of like drowning with no chance to escape, like if someone threw you in a cage, or if you were trapped in an underwater cave, like things like that. It, but I mean, that's kind of just a human natural instinct to be afraid in a situation like that, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, I, I can't think of anything irrational. <laughs> How about, do you have any phobias? Can you think of anything that would be fairly irrational? I don't know. I mean, uh, I went to the scare zone. Have you ever done that in VR chat? It has like 20 phobias you can experience. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did that like last year. That was really cool. There was some really cool stuff in there. Some of them were, uh, I skipped. I only skipped two, I think. Yeah. I did every, I did every other one. You skipped it. Well, I know what we're doing for Halloween. Come oh, on, we're, we're gonna go back fuck. in. Let's go. Let's go back in. <laughs> I did like the Grudge one and the Friday Nights at Freddy's one, because I because I did Friday Nights at Freddy's VR once, like last year or something like that. And in and yeah. uh, I only made it to night two, and then I, I I okay. So explain some backstory here. I know what Friday the uh, Five Nights at Freddy's is. But I never watched anyone play it because I was just like, fuck that game. That's like a jump scare game. So I just completely like vetoed out of like ever watching any big YouTuber, anybody ever playing the game. I know like the basics of like you switch the cameras, close the door, the lights. But uh, I went in basically essentially <clears throat> blind. And, um, and when I was playing a VR, I was like... I was like, what, what did the lights do? And I kept flicking the light on, and then I was like, oh, I see the monster in the fucking window. Does it scare them? So I kept clicking the light to, like, is that how you supposed to scare them? <laughs> like, make them, like, go away or, like, fuck off? And apparently, no. The lights are just so you can see, but because I have an index, I could see regardless if the light was on or not. So I was like... Oh, so... It 
Yeah. So yeah. I so on the desktop version, the light is useful, but when you're in VR, you can just physically like see because you can just turn up the brightness and be like, oh yeah, I see the outline of the monster. Yeah. Um. The same. Yeah. Uh. Five Nights at Freddy's VR. There's. I could cheat. I cheated the entire uh third game. The one where you're like in the haunted house version of it or whatever, and I don't know if you played it at all. No, I've, I've only done like the only, first oh, there's, one. There's only oh, there, there's only one animatronic, and the idea is you're supposed to like lead it away from you with sound cues while you're like managing your like vents and stuff, so it can't like crawl through the vents. But anyway, th there'd be like hallucinations of like the other ones that you would see if you turned your head, it would like ah, jump out at you, but it wouldn't kill you; it would just make you like scream. And then the monster would hear you and then come, like, tromping back towards you, you know? Mm -hmm. So you had to constantly play this game of, like, not freaking the hell out and keeping him on the other side of the map. But I learned, like, one spot where I couldn't or I didn't move my head where I could see everything I could do. And... <laughs> um. The, the jump scares couldn't have I could reach like everything like in the actual desktop game you're supposed to turn your head and it would like be there and you couldn't avoid it yeah. but in VR you can just in like, VR you have a uh -huh. lighter you can be like doo, 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 doo. Yeah. you can see it like hanging out there like waiting to jump scare you but you know as long as you don't move your head farther than this it's not going to do anything so I just I just kept poking the, I basically just sat back and relaxed and just kept him on the other side of the map and he never moved because he never got any other side <laughs> and it worked, but damn, you gamed the yeah. system. You power gamed him. You fucked him up. My tracking really doesn't like me sitting in this corner. I might have to move here in a second. I can't put my hand put my hand over my head, and all hell breaks loose. No, I gotcha. <laughs> um, how'd you come up with the name of Nice? Oh wait. Uh, back when I first started content creating, um, like I said, ye oldie days, um. God, I didn't even have a cell phone. And the cell phones weren't even really a thing yet. Oh my god. I've been at this too long. I'm done. <laughs> but, uh, no, um... What was this? 1982? Uh, what do you mean? Yeah, cell phones well, weren't a thing, Well, bro. smartphones. Smart, smartphones. Uh, there was, like, Blackberries. Uh, okay. yeah, like, Flip phones, bro. Play, like... Yeah, I, I had a Motorola Razor. I love that thing, man. I had a phone before that that could play Brickout, and I was the cool kid because I could play Brickout on it. <laughs> But, uh, anyway, name, um, I, it really just kind of came down to, I'm trying to come up with a name that is something I haven't heard anywhere before. Cause you know, this is back in like edgy days where everyone's name was like soul eater underscore XX, you know, the kind of things. Yeah. Um, yeah. Those edgelords. Like, uh, you know, there was edgelords next to other names that are like Mr. Fuzzy Tins, you know, or. All those kind of, and I, I wanted something that was short, simple, um, and all this other stuff. And I came up with Manus, and I was coming up with like things, the words that run off like maniac, manic, um, things like that. And I ended up at Manus, and it just, it just kind of kept. I, I wrote down like thirty names, and that one just I kept coming back to. I, I try to read them, and I just kept going back and i'm like okay this is this is sticking i like this um and at that time i couldn't really find anything else um that was related to it and then i went to go make a uh, an account under the name manis and manis apparently was taken by someone who hadn't been on any website in like 200 years so i couldn't be manis so i was like i like the number eight i'm manis 08 <laughs> there you go I mean, my name originally yeah. was uh, like, that one, Rebel Fifty Five. You know. Yeah, I thought about taking the number off. I I have the option to take the number off, but like, I don't. It's kind of like a caboose on on the name now. Like, just having man, it just kind of feels empty. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't it it, it doesn't end. It just kind of like trails out like man. <laughs> you know, it doesn't look right on on name tags for me anymore. It's just kind of stuck, and here it is. So I'm man, so it. Makes sense. Yeah. How did it feel? Everyone, everyone. Oh, go ahead. Huh? Oh, I was gonna say, and then everyone comes up with different ways how to pronounce my name uh, through all the years. Uh, Manis, Mancy is the big one. Maurice, Maniac, uh, Mayonnaise, uh, Manice. Uh, Manice, you know, Man yeah, you know, Man Manice. Yeah, yeah that's how I pronounce I'll it. To anything. I'll, I'll answer to anything even remotely close to Manis. I mean, you, you can mumble it, and I'll probably. I'll probably answer to it as like, man. <laughs> man. Yeah. 
Chat, we, 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 we can make a new nickname for you today if we wanted to. Oh god, do it please. I'd love I'd love Mandy. more. I I I I start collecting them. I haven't heard Mandy. That that would be a new one. Hey, I've heard Manny. Manny a lot of a lot of people people call Maniac. Me Manny. Um, oh yeah, I haven't I've heard a billion times. Um, uh, the the name Mancy actually though. Like every, everyone calls me Mancy. Like everyone calls me Mancy. It actually stuck cuz one night in one of the one of the party groups we were in this it's like three o'clock in the morning, you know. Yeah. How how late night mm -hmm. VR chat goes. We're we're all laying there. We're all basically dead, and mm -hmm. some random person came in, and they're like, "Oh, what's going on here? What's going on here?" And I'm like, "Oh, you know, we're just chilling." All of a sudden, he looks at me, and goes, "Oh, I know you. I saw you on one highlight reel, Mancy. I love your stuff." And I'm like. <laughs> And the, everyone just started laughing, and that's where the name Mancy came from. And then, like, everyone in the dance communities just started calling me Mancy. And now everyone calls me Mancy. So, I like it, though. I get to be a fancy, fancy, dancy Mancy. So. I gotcha. Um, yeah. What was the what was the like getting VR on for the first time? When, when you put the headset on? Were you just like, oh, whoa, what the... <laughs> The first time, the first time, I remember exactly where I was the first time I wore VR. I was at a convention. I was at a, I was at a anime and gaming convention um, in Green Bay, Wisconsin, at Kitsune Con, and they had a VR setup there. And mm -hmm. I've never stepped in VR. I've heard about it, but we never stepped in it. So I was like, okay, let's try this. And you know, I wait in line and I put it on, and you know, and you look at your hands and it's like. Oh, what the fuck? You know, it's the weirdest thing. And I got thrown in, um, Waltz of the Wizard it was the first VR game I ever played. And I just sat there. I don't know if you ever played it. It's it's kind of a tech demo, really, but it, it, I think it's actually expanded pretty far now within updates over the years. But back then it was just, you just stand in front of this, this table and you have a bunch of things you can screw around with and throw around and do magic and stuff. And I was just like, just immediately I'm like, this, this is, this is it. This, <laughs> I need this. We need this. And then uh, that year or that next year, mm -hmm. we, uh, we got married and then me and me and my wife, we got married and with the wedding money, we decided like, we're buying a VR headset. We're doing this, so that was it. Became a it became a wedding present. That that's where that came from. Most people yeah, nah. who get married are like, let's buy a bed, let's get a couch, sixty inch TV, you know, a nice car or some shit. I don't know whatever people buy, but you're like, let's get VR. Let's get virtual reality, and it was such a good investment. I still have that that poor headset over the years. Like, I hear people like breaking headsets every other day from just using them. That mm -hmm. headset, I swear to God, could take a bullet and it would it would be okay. I couldn't kill it. <laughs> Held together with love, but I still have it. It's it's on my shelf of peculiar items. There it is. <laughs> but, okay. Has your has your wife tried yeah. VR? Oh yeah! Oh no, we we played we play VR um, all the time. I upgraded to an Index though, and sadly, I kind of I've been saving up um, to get her another headset as well that can run off the 2.0 base stations. Mm -hmm. But she, she plays a lot of Beat Saber. Um, she play this. I got her to play Phasmo a couple times with me. She loved and hated it at the same time. Absolutely terrifying, <laughs> but at the same time, she, she she's got like this weird. Again, love hate relationship with it where she loves it. She's fascinated by it, mm -hmm. but she's terrified of it. <laughs> so, but no, it, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely been an experience, but that, that was probably the first time. Well, I know it was the first time I, I stepped in VR um, and all that kind of stuff. So, I've been at it a while since, yeah, 20, 2016, 2015. Okay, how was it the first time in VR chat then in VR? Um, like I said, the first time in VR chat, I was with Derp Company and we weren't really screwing around very much. I I had no idea how it worked. Um, I bumbled in, I ran through their half-assed tutorial at the time. I, I don't even know if it's still there. Um, and 
I kind of bumbled in, and again, I mean, at this point, I've already been in VR for a couple years, so there was nothing that was mind-blowing over it. Um, but once I started branching away from Derp Company and just bumbling around public worlds and hanging out and doing all this, it's just this this whole social platform of being who you want, where you want, when you want, you know, seeing what you want with these impossible worlds or these in crazy, incredible things. It's, 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 it's very, it can be very addictive. I can see definitely how a lot of people can spend. I mean, I, I spent a lot of time here in the early days. Um, you know, you get home from work, you basically pop in mm -hmm. uh, until you fall asleep and then you pop out, go back to work, repeat. But, um, you know, a lot of people sleep in VR and that's kind of really interesting. Um, a lot of people, and I don't want to say they need to, but it, it definitely, VR can be used as a, um, a sleep aid, you know? Because, like, I mean, yeah. a lot of us probably don't have the most exciting bedrooms. You know, they're pretty, pretty standard, westernized, suburban, you know, bedrooms and stuff for the most part. Uh, but you can go into VR, you know, let's go, let's go sleep in a cozy winter cabin tonight, you know, when I'm next to a fire, you know, you, you, a lot of people don't have those options and it's, I, it, I thought it can be very relaxing. You were going to go, oh, they don't have someone next to sleep like with. Oh, no, a lot of people sleep together. There's, a, there's entire communities based on cuddle piling. <laughs> oh, I'm in IRL. Not doing anything lewd. Oh, not doing anything. I mean, okay, so spoilers. Trying to lay down with someone in VR to like spoon or whatever, uh -huh. does, it, it, it doesn't work. <laughs> what do you mean? You just, you just hug a body yeah. pillow, man, and you just sort of like, yes, dear. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. This cat is <laughs> real. And then the unmute. Yo, yeah, what up? Just... Yo, what up, bro? <laughs> what, what up there? Holy you shit! Got a fine double wide surprise on you. Oh God shit! Damn. <laughs> My immersion. Please mute yourself, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Well, yeah. I just got a body pillow that just came out, and it's oh. actually now we can actually cuddle. I'll trade you. How about that? You give me yours, I'll give you mine, oh, yeah. and, and we can cuddle. We How can about try. That? There we go. We can try it out sometime. You said you can't cuddle someone in VR. Yeah. I can spoon someone. I mean, we can. Try. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you can hug a pillow, right? There you go. Easy, yeah. easy, easy peasy. You look like a big spoon. What do you mean? I'll have a haptic on, so then when I actually I hug you, I'll feel it. <laughs> Perfect. We're reaching next levels. Full dive is next, right? Yeah, yeah. And then you, when you touch your thigh, I can feel it. I can be like, oh, yeah. You like that? Oh, yeah. You like those vibrations? <laughs> Stagger, yeah, it feels like my phone's going off in my pocket. Exciting. Oh yeah, I don't think this. I don't think it's your phone. I think it's something else. Honestly. Oh, so, oh. Mm. I see. I like your attitude. You're thinking, and I respect that. Oh, absolutely. Well, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> how was your first experience then in full body? Oh, it worked. I, that was the most shocking part. I remember that. I, I I put the trackers on. My my trackers showed up, but my straps were late. So I just I just rubber banded them on my body, and it worked. Oh, it was fine. But I mean it. But I'm so used to things just, Breaking. especially hardware, just not working. Like you go like, all right, it's supposed to do this, but it's not. <laughs> They turned on, I, I calibrated in, I was in, I'm like, oh my god, look at my butt! You know, and it, it, it worked, I can actually turn around, I can lay down. Um, but it was good, I mean, I, you know, definitely as soon as you can, as soon as like, you can start uh, moving your legs around and stuff, it's, it's definitely, it's a great investment. Like, mm -hmm. full body is 100% worth it for what it is. Um... But yeah, not not too bad, not too bad. It it was good, it was good. I got the I've been a I've been a Tundra trackers tester now for the past couple months. So oh yeah, for like three or so. How, how are those yeah, going? I've been I've been. They're really good. They're these these things honestly blow the living hell out of Vive trackers. Like they're they're like one third the size. They're smaller than Vive 3.0 trackers. They don't have the little points on them, and they last like nine plus hours. 
So they weigh like they they are like the size of like an American half dollar and about as tall as a hockey puck. Not even. They weigh like nothing. And they they just work. I mean <laughs> they just work. You got the the single my IO shield or my IO plate, the front IO plate on my computer for the first time in like 7 years has been open. <laughs> I don't have a million dongle slots for it anymore. I I they got the the the, the one, one yeah. the one uh the one and it it works really good. So Yeah, I love them. They're they're really good. They're Kickstarter uh exploded which is good um i can't wait to see more people get them i was doing a lot of uh bug testing and stuff on them uh with them or i shouldn't say bug test i I was testing i i didn't solve the bugs i just report them and then they face them but i got you but yeah no they 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 work just like regular trackers they they pair and act the exact same you don't have to do anything crazy it's just it's just another tracker thing, and it's yeah, it's not HTC, so that's true. Pretty cool. <laughs> so, how did you get into? How, how does like that transition from playing in VR, so VR to full body to then dancing, like how did that happen? Um, I used. I think it kind of. You can really kind of point it back to you know that MMD nightclub. That's where I found a lot of my original friends that kind of bumbled around in dancing worlds and all that. I used to jump around in. Um, you remember Tiz? Because I know you used to be a big part of Tiz too. Yeah, so it's the jam. Um, Tiz nightclub. Yeah, you were. I think I I might still have that URL. I bet you're still in the. Cl- I bet you're still in the janitor closet. Yeah, the guy but, who worked on it like quit the game. I think so. Like it's still the exact yeah. same as it was to, like two years ago, whenever it was made. <laughs> Perfect. But um, we used to jump around. Me and a couple. I just we start collecting friends. You know, we used to always just jump around in this group um, where we just club hop. You know, and then like we ended up in a club. We ended up uh, joining. DDVR uh, originally, and then that splintered off into Dirty Dancers, which exploded for a long time. And it was like those two clubs were like, if you were early VR chat and you were a dancer, you were there. You know that was that was it. Um, and then they all splintered off into a million communities where we know now today. Um, but from there, I mean, I just, you just start dancing. Um, we used to just dance around, I used to dance around in public worlds and, you know, I mean, I wiggle my butt every now and then I've gotten pretty good at, you know, performing on stage is, you know, exotic dancing and all that kind of stuff. Um, I've been at it for coming up on four years plus. Um, I've been at it a long time. Um, run a run a help run a club myself now called phoenix palace Mm -hmm. which is pretty exciting uh dance at mvp uh perform there all that kind of stuff it's just you know you kind of just domino effect from one club to the next and before you know it you're you got 60 pairs of eyes looking at you and you wonder how the heck happened what the heck happened but uh not complaining i love it i i really do it's a lot of fun it's great workout so yeah, somewhere along the true. line that dominoed into into that. <laughs> no, you, well, yeah. you brought up a, some good memories for me, like uh, Dance Dance VR. I think that was like the first dance event that I ever attended. That was years ago. Yeah, I, I'm not regular anymore. Like I would go like really randomly because I, I used to stream going to like Publix all the time. So I would just stream going there. Nobody had any issues of it because I was just talking to people. But I remember like just seeing people like a DJ playing and then people just like in full body just going like, you know, doing their thing. And I'm just like, what the hell? <laughs> people, are, There's like 30, yeah. 40 people in full body. Like It's not like some guy in like T-posing or something. Like people are actually dancing. I was like actually impressed. I was like, what the heck? There's no crashers. Yeah. V- you know? I was like, what? The, 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 the thing that's most impressive over anything that's happened within the last couple of years is how big the live DJ uh, club scene, mm-hmm. VR club scene has exploded. Uh, a big thing being because of um, a COVID. COVID yeah. played a huge role in it. And it's, I'm not saying COVID's a good thing, but for the VR club scene, it caused it to explode. Like, yeah five times over you know because all the all the big you know all the big actual dj events all the big rave club scenes and all that kind of had to 
go away for a while and you know it's it really um, made a lot of people invest into VR because, like, all of a sudden you're like, oh, why do that when you can go into – you can sit in your house, do the exact same thing in, you know, in the safety of your, your play space, you know, and then go in here in these huge venues, these incredible venues that couldn't exist IRL. You know, there's, there's incredible places like that you, dance, you can dance at or that uh, you can go party at and all that kind of stuff. You see the same live DJs, same quality on the same equipment, you know, he's with the same friends, front yeah. row access for free. You know, it's, it's definitely made a huge, huge uh, positive impact on that scene. It's, it's wild. I can't wait to see where it goes. The party scene is definitely exploding right now, and it's going to be really cool within the next couple of years what exactly happens. And there's a lot of immersive stuff that are coming mm -hmm. that, are, that are out that people are realizing uh, you can do now with Udon. Like, you can have the lights in the club physically react to the music specifically. You know, you can put it on your avatars. Like, yep. my avatar... Uh, reacts to the music and your emissions light up and pulse to the music the lights all have different you know levels on their um on the like whatever's playing you know the treble will set off different lights than the bass all that kind of stuff and they they just like the club just is absolutely alive it's insane you know you've seen when i know you come to phoenix pal and you dance we're able to stream music at super high quality so the bass can just you know the music can absolutely just be thumping while you're you know you're while you're spectating and all that kind of stuff or you're 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 doing your silly memes while someone's trying to dance on you you're yelling at them that you'll never talk thanks for coming over i have no idea what now. you're talking like about I'm <laughs> Yeah, wholesome being here. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking but, about. I'm just, I'm just a nice guy. I just appreciate those who uh, perform. Yeah, give you a little extra attention. Yeah, let's go with that. Yeah. <laughs> but no, but uh, what you said earlier about like the club scene in VR chat, I, I do believe you're right. You know, the pandemic, as horrible as it is, it definitely opened new doors for. DJs and dancers and stuff like that. For example, of like Slyfest, there was uh, also VCAT this year. Um, uh, they had like hologram like singer slash dancers on the stage with like uh, Waifu Baby, who is a rapper, a VTuber, and she was in for VCAT. Um, I know what was the other one? Slyfest. There's like Muzzfest or whatever Muzz event. Like there's like a bunch of events. I don't even remember half of them. But like th there, there's a lot of all these like live djs going on and people are flipping out and they're just like oh my god that's porter robinson the guy who made shelter dude in language you know yeah. he plays vr chat and you know all these crazy things and you know um i th wasn't there like uh some i don't know some big name djs at some events people are flipping out losing their shit you know like oh it, yeah i was when i was when i was in um uh, Dirty Dancers, I was I was going to get a DJ. It kind of fell through at the last minute, which was kind of sad, but I was going to get a f DJ called The Flash. Uh-huh. Um... He's, he's really cool. I I, really, I always used to listen to his music and all that. He kind of did a lot like on a Periscope and stuff back in the day. But like he had like this big like mascot head on that like lit up, kind of like Dead Mouse, but it was just like a big yeah. dude's head, and it was I don't know, it was kind of cool. But um, yeah, there's there's a lot of big names. Uh, I know there's been big events. I know VR. I think VR Chat was fumbling into looking how to how to have like big events but it requires whitelisting and stuff and i don't yeah. know how the hell they're gonna do that but but no yeah there's there's been a lot of big names a lot of big names and big projects and all that a couple are uh kind of an nda on but oh really like yeah Damn, shit. I, can't, I can't talk about them uh -oh. but but there's yeah there's there's some cool stuff there's some really cool stuff that um that's in the works or was in the works or has been in the works or wants to be in the works. Like the VR scene is going to like absolutely do some incredible stuff here coming out. I can't wait to see where it is in the next, you know, 10 years or wherever the heck it goes. You know, Ready Player One, honestly, I don't see it being that far away. Mm -hmm. Like this whole idea of just full immersion. Um, 
and all that. But yeah, I mean to kind of kind of roll back a little bit. I think it's something really important these days. You know, like we were talking about before. You know, that a lot of you see a lot of things on you know the the news and all that always kind of focuses on the bads and all mm-hmm. that. But you, you got to look at those like positives. You know, like like I said, the, the VR dancing scene for everything bad going on has definitely exploded, and a lot of people have definitely learned a lot about their lives here in in VR. That they probably couldn't be able to explore if they were, you know, not able to be in VR. I'm, I'm sure you've seen as much as you have in your interviews and everyone you've talked to in your travels that, you know, they, they've made big life, big life changes for the better in themselves, you know? Oh, absolutely. That they wouldn't be able to do or, or didn't really feel comfortable talking about whether, you know, they, they may be coming out or maybe, you know, they, they found some. I, I know for a fact my, my friend um, Soxy and Zemio got married IRL and they met in VR chat. They, they live together. No, they, 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 you know, they, yeah, it, it's quite, it's quite, it's quite awesome to see, you know, like people's lives made you know just a hundred percent better just from like so a, wait, a silly little you're game. saying there's hope for me animated. there's hope there's for me? hope for you we, oh we my god yeah oh. <laughs> to win my heart i just need like uh you know a thousand subs maybe i'll you know <laughs> yeah yeah her. it's a little bit are you saying you're a little, a little bit of a polygamist with with your entire community there yeah you know? yeah i'm i'm actually looking d- dead ass serious i'm um I'm gonna become an ordained minister. That, that's really? actually on my list of things. Yeah, I've, I'm. I've been looking into it. I just gotta find the exact link to do it. But once I do, I'm going through with it. So, hopefully by ne- the end of uh, or beginning of next year, I'll be an official ordained minister, and I could actually marry people. I think that'd be really cool. Oh, yeah. It's not that. It, I've learned it's not that hard. It's not so. that hard. The, the reason why it's not that hard, you know, they, they kind of want you to, you know. Join hands, be happy, you know. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Can I, hold hands? I, I had I had <laughs> I had a friend who did did the ordained minister thing. It takes like you said like less than an hour, and like you sent they get they, they uh they they send they get email you their certificate. But they also give you a physical copy if you want. And then he went mm-hmm. in VR chat and married a hundred people. <laughs> But I mean, they weren't like yeah, actually like you know IRL marriage, just VR marriage. But I mean, yeah, it's just RP marriage, not like they actually filled out the paperwork to. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like it was, it's kind of like how you just like oh my, because this is like three, four years ago when like everybody and their mom was like ha ha ha, let's get married in VR, and then every day someone got married and they're just like, and then like two days later they just break up, so it, it, it got oversaturated basically. Yeah, it, it lost the meaning really fast. It yeah. just kind of became a thing to do. I mean, there the, there was worlds built for it. It was like the official VR chat marriage world, like one, two, three, four. Some guy made it. Mm-hmm. And uh, the weird thing was, if you went to the world, it looks normal. But then, like, you go to the secret door, and it turns into like hell and like Satan shit. <laughs> it's <just> like <laughs> the whole like the whole map like gets all like fucked up looking. If you go if you click this button, I'm just like, what the fuck. That's what I miss about the old Perfect. days. Fi- finding like really normal looking maps, you click a button and then just turns into like fucking hell. It's like what what's happening? Oh yeah, Easter. I love Easter eggs in video games. I found yes, I was playing Phasmophobia yesterday uh, with a couple of friends and all that. And the new, have you played Phasma the New Nightmare? No, update I haven't, not yet. Okay, all right. I, again, I like that you added the word yet. I respect it. Good. What I also understand is we're playing. Got it. Good. Oh. Uh, <laughs> nice. But um, we were finding like all these like Easter eggs in the new update. There's so many. Like there's like you walk off the dock and like Jason's ma- or uh, Freddy. No, I'm sorry. Jason's mask like floats out from the the water. Um, or you know there's the, there's like a dead body under the cabin. There's Slender Man. Like what the fuck? It, it's the, yeah. There's like all these little Easter eggs oh. randomly in the maps. Uh, they have a chance of spawning, and we were we were doing like we were doing like um, Easter egg hunting. I found this random jack o' lantern pumpkin that's just randomly sitting on a pedestal behind the the like one of the houses. 
and you can walk up to it, but you can't interact with it. I, I am convinced there's a secret with it. I spent like an hour and probably pissed off everyone because I was probably being boring just staring at a pumpkin for like an hour and a half. <laughs> I, I'm convinced there's something with it. I'm going to figure it out. I don't know what it is. But we'll get there. But either way, yeah. Speaking of <laughs> speaking of Halloween <laughs> stuff, now have you done yeah. any uh, Halloween stuff in VR chat? I've done I've done some horror maps. Um, I got my Halloween avatar. Um, I'm I'm pretty pretty set to go for the spooky season. Um, there's there's the Halloween events. You know, Phoenix Palace is having a a Halloween event next uh, the, this Sunday. Uh, um. All those kind of things. I've been bumbling all around. But I, I don't know if I'll honestly be there because I always hand out candy. I always, I always like handing out candy. I'm, I'm always the host that gives out the full-size candy bars. Hell yeah. So, Amen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone's got to do it. It's good. I know. There's, there's something magical about, like, a little kid. And coming up to your door and you know they say trick or treat and you just give them a full size candy bar or, you know you hold out the bucket and it's full of full size candy bars and their face just oh my god <laughs> it's a good feeling I, I remember it when I was a kid you know trick or treating and there was this one house that had it and I remember how how good it felt and how memorable it was so to be able to you know give out full size candy bars it's it's a very magical feeling it's not even that expensive to do like you can buy like a box of like 30 hershey bars for like 10 bucks also you can buy them for yourself just remember 30 hershey bars 10 bucks <laughs> i heard the pro strat but, is to wait until after halloween so the day after and all the chocolates 50 percent off or like dirt cheap yeah you go to like Walgreens or whatever and pick up one of those big bags of just variety, yeah. fun size candy bars for pennies on the dollar. It's pretty great. So. Yeah, that made Dennis yells at me. Yeah, I was like, I'm wow, just... you have like a million cavities. And you're like, she. Yeah. Just give it's me this. Job. I mean, bro, just give me the veneers, bro. Yeah, I, I'm convinced that dentists and doctors are like the only job where you can insult people to their face and get away with it. Yeah, because they'll just be like, oh, I'll see like, you uh, when I take out that cavity and cost you $2,000, buddy. Yeah. And you're like, okay. Yeah. You should brush more. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. You should lose some weight. You should walk some more. I'm like, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Things like that, you know. You ever say that to your doctor? You should walk. Why don't you? We should do it together. <laughs> oh shit! Whoa! Oh Wait a God. second. This is not yeah. supposed to be a way. What the? What? Yeah, that's that's how you beat cancer, right? You just you just have the uh, the Uno reverse card. You know, yeah. like I'm sorry to say, you uh, you have cancer. What? Wait, Fuck. what? <laughs> what the? No, you. No, you Dude, first. Solved it. It's like ET logic. You just gotta. We just gotta constantly point it at. We just gotta mm -hmm. give someone the bad news, and they'll just keep taking it. Just one guy with like 55 types of cancer taking it for the team. You ever play uh, any of the SP, uh, SCP games? Yes. Oh my gosh. It's it's been a while. Um, I played them. I played them in the past. I know like SP, SCP Containment Breach. A lot of people have played. Um, all those i kind of played again it's 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 one of those games where it's like everyone's played it yeah. um i don't know if there's been any big ones i know there's there's a couple other ones now uh there's a couple other scp games i think there's a multiplayer one i've been in the yeah. the scp maps in vr chat um there's an udon one that actually has oh God, i can never remember their numbers i'm so bad at scp numbers i love scps they're such good bathroom reads but um <laughs> Sitting on the <laughs> toilet. Ah, oh, yes, SCP-227. Yeah. Ah, yeah, I remember this one. Yes. Good times. Yeah. <laughs> but um, the the statue, the one that you can't blink at. Um, it's, it's four seven. Oh. No, it's the most famous one. I can never remember its number. Uh, is it SCP-176? 173? Anyway, one, seven, you know which one. Yeah, Everyone knows like which I'm talking yeah. about. It's there's an Udon world that has a fully working one with a blink mechanic, and you try to walk through the map with this thing on your butt. And it didn't really work very well because it like killed you regardless. You couldn't oh. hear it coming. So, but it was the the concept was there. I like the concept, you know. But. 
So a lot of a lot of VR games always feel like just kind of tech demos and concepts. But there's there's other games that have come out then out of these tech demos that really have come a lot of like really far. Like you played Alex, right? Half Life Alex. I beat the whole game when it came out. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Amazing. It's, it's a full VR like. You gotta play this. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. I I I agree. But, Same with other games like Boneworks, yeah. you know, uh, Pavlov, stuff like that. Yeah. There, yeah, just there's it's it's coming definitely in the right direction. Um, Resident Evil uh, four seven had oh. VR. Resident Evil. Oh yeah, that's right. Four now has a VR release too. It's only it? for Quest two. Is that a full? Came out. A quest. Came out, yeah. Came out. I want it. Uh, can't play it. Only wanted, for the Quest two. Quest two only, bro. I wanted. I wanted so bad to play uh, Resident Evil seven. Yeah, and, um, VR. VR, but it was only for PlayStation, yeah, PlayStation, so I couldn't, I couldn't play it. Unless you hacked it or something. Made a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have the, I have the amazing ability to break games in ways that no one else did. Like it's all, oh, it's so simple. Just take this file, put it in here, and like, there's a million videos where that's all you do, and I try to do it, and the game explodes. It's, it's the Mancy effect. I, I have this ability to break games in ways that no one else has. And it, it's a feature for me. It's it's kind of I've learned a lot of a lot of my content creating life has yeah. been pe people watch me like how they watch NASCAR. I'm I'm pretty convinced. Um, they, they you know how there's like a large fan base that only watches NASCAR for like the Rex. Yeah, it's kind of like that. They just wait. They just sit there with a bowl of popcorn, just like waiting for me to scuff out, and they're like, yes. Yeah, <laughs> that or make me eat really spicy jerky or trash tasting jelly beans. This I, I sit in here and I offer you know cozy, comfy content, and they 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 just they're like just eat trash water. <laughs> but I love it and would have it no other way. So they want to see you uh, suffer, basically. Yeah, basically, yeah. It's it's been, I've, I've slowly become apparently masochistic over the years. Oh, have you uh have you had any thoughts about like role playing in VR? Um a little bit, a little bit. I wouldn't be able to uh I, I I've seen like a lot of like the Callus Row and all the other um big RP communities I watched like I've seen you do a bunch, I've seen like Ariana do a bunch, um uh, a lot of other friends. I, I get it, I, I like the idea. It's one of those things where it's always about like time. My schedule is so small uh, um, between running my community, uh, managing obviously the relationship with my wife, work, uh, and having any personal time, and also trying to plan out. You know, uh, I think I've told you, and I know I've told my community, but we're we're currently trying for a kid. Um, so down yes, the line there, I that. yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, we're we're in the process of that, trying uh, trying for a kit, and you know, managing how how am I going to manage you know doing all this and raising a child properly is definitely going to be it's going to be a wild next couple of years. Um, I can't wait to see. I'm excited. I'm really excited for it. Just it's one of those things where it's like, man, <laughs> to actually sit and like invest into being in an RP community is like, oh. That's, that's a that's a big one so pretty wild i like the idea of it though like th that's what vr honestly vr needs so bad is just a proper mmorpg like solid just yeah. you know like I, the best thing i can ever describe it as is just sao like just sword art online in VR, it doesn't have to be, you know, full dive, just something where I can have a character in a world and I can interact in it and be, well, it, like, I mean, that's kind of what we're doing, but nothing saves, you know what I mean? Like, you don't have experience, you don't have an inventory, you don't have property, you don't have, you can, once you're in game, you can't customize, you know what I mean? Like, a full MMO RPG. Multiplayer Skyrim in VR. Bam. Like, oh my god, please. I think that'd be so cool. No, I gotcha. But I've had other guests eventually. talk about it. There there's two that there's well there's one that's out right now called Orbis VR. Um yeah. but that one sort of fell off the radar. 
Some big streamers played it, but they played it for like a day and it was kind of like whatever. Um, and then there was one literally called, wasn't it called Zenith or something like that? Like the person who makes your avatars? Zenith. Yeah. So there's one that's like that and some people have played like a beta version of it. I haven't really seen too much about it, but it is the same premise of like an RPG and stuff like that. Or MMO RPG. So, but yes. um... I don't know. It definitely would be a cool, you know, concept to have something like that. It could be as simple as just VR version of RuneScape. Like, that That could just be, you know, as simple as it is. Just a grindy game. You know, you're hitting that stone. Come on, let's go. Hit that. You got to mine that rune, dude. Come on. Let's go. <laughs> Log in for your dailies. Yeah. Click for your dailies. Yeah, literally. Yeah. I'm not joking you. That's I swear. That's how VR and sell the dailies, bro. You log it in. Sell. You, you can only come in once every 24 hours, or you have to like do a raid and you just like boot up in full body. You're like, all right, guys, we're doing the raid, bro. You got the healers, bro, and they pull like a book and they're like, WM healing spell, bro. Not like yeah. chant shit and whatever. And the tank's like, come on, guys, come on, dab. Oh, ooh, I killed the boss, dude. Ooh, get wrecked, nerd. Just beat the yeah. final boss, just Fortnite floss on him. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but I can see that. Yeah, like, the concept is there. The demand is heavily there. There's enough now hardware out there where a company could honestly invest in it. I bet you would do really good. The big thing, I think, is at this point, a lot of people who have the full body and all that stuff that would be needed to run it, would you would need to have... You would honestly need to have some way to import yourself mm -hmm. into it. You know what I mean? At least on your end. Locally, I agree with you. Yeah, at least. Like what I'm um, doing but, right but, now. This is a local only avatar that yeah. you can't see, but the stream can see me as this I avatar. Can... Wow. Yeah. Wow. I can look at the camera and see one version of you and look over here and see the other one. Yeah, it's magic. <laughs> you got a number three pencil in your hair on that one. That's only a number two pencil. That's a yeah. cheap pencil. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> That's like a pencil in your hair right there that has like the crappy eraser that it doesn't erase. It just kind of like smears yeah. it. That one gets rid of it. That's the proper quality one right there. That's a good avatar. Yeah, I yeah. mean, uh, I always thought about not just going like the RuneScape, like World of Warcraft route, but also going something like more of a role play element, like just having GTA, but VR. Yeah. There's, or, there's a million ways it could yeah. go. I mean, it would it, it it all be basically the same. You know, it's just depending on the setting. Are you going for something future, current, past? You know, like there's there's a million ways it could go. It's just a matter of just can we go one way? Like, can we pick a way and go? <laughs> Not all that wander are lost. But. Yeah, I've uh, I think in the next five ten years that's going to be the next big thing, is those types of games. Um, I I think, like, for me, like you brought up a good point, like you know property and stuff like that. Like technically, you can build a world or pay someone to build a world, like how I do with this world. Um, but mm -hmm. to like actually have real estate, I always thought like the element of having like imagine like an island. Kind of like Second Life. You have an island, and then you have plots. Kind of like how in Minecraft people sell plots, but instead of Minecraft, it's, you know, VR chat or whatever game. And, and you have, like, yeah. it's like one city, and you can go anywhere in the city, but, like, oh, this is where that residential area is. This is where all the players live, and you can go to, like, next door and be like, hey, neighbor, what's up? You don't really have that element yeah. in VR chat, obviously, because in VR chat, it's like you just walk for a portal and walk for the next place. That yeah, version is kind of broken. The, the, I know the understanding that that's how it has to work because loading like 50 gigs of a city is just unrealistic. But it'd be kind of cool. The, 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 yeah, like, you know, like yeah, a big ass fucking city all at once is like massive on people's computers, especially for VR. However, I've met some people that are willing to try to actually incorporate that in VR chat. Um, one of them being the castle world. So basically. They're talking about running like six clubs at the exact same time. Oh my so, god! So you like walk down the like street. In one club? Yeah, no, like so. Think of it like you spawn in like like a like imagine like a block or two, 
uh, in real life, like like a street block. And then you walk down the street and like, oh, here's this club. And then like you go in, there's 20 people in there. Then you're like, oh shit, the other club's starting up. And you just walk down the street and go to the other club. And then there's like 60. Oh, yeah. I see what you're saying. So like you wouldn't move worlds. You would just basically, yeah, okay. That definitely would be a lot more immersive. Just like a big ass bar crawl. Basically. Yeah. yeah. And he's already shown me it off stream and like it it's it's an interesting concept to have um be able to run like multiple events in a, in the night and then you could just sort of pick and choose what you want to do. Like, oh, here's the dance club where you know you can have a little freaky time, and then you're like, oh, I just want to drink with the boys and play darts. Okay, let's walk over this place. Instead of actually going for a portal, yeah. you're just choosing what you want to do, and then and then the stories with that, yeah. the role play of like physically walking. It's not that far. It's like you know, like one minute walk down to each place. But like, you know, you yeah. could be like, hey, I spent my time at you know the crimson whatever place, and then I went to this other club and. Yo, oh, yo, dude, this guy was like a crackhead. He was trying to, like, shank me in the alleyway or some shit. I don't know what the fuck's going on with that. Like, yeah. <laughs> just, just, just mix in some of the RP elements. Yeah, just, just, just mix in some <laughs> random, <laughs> like... <Oblivion> NPCs. <laughs> Hello, sir. I have a quest for you. I said I'm gonna need your help. What the <laughs> fuck? What the fuck? Well, I'm high as fuck. I'm high as fuck, and this guy's trying to sell me fucking squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, I'll give you a bag of crack if you, uh, you go beat up the hooker over there. You're like, oh, shit, okay. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> San Andreas mission pass music playing. Yeah, I mean. You're onto something. Speaking of something. GTA, you know it's being remastered. It's all, or the trilogy is. It's releasing next Oh, my next God, month. yeah. Yeah, in like two weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exciting. I, I loved I loved Grand Theft Auto 3 and uh, Vice City. I like I like grew up on those games. Mm -hmm. I have no idea why like I would have been when did that game come out? Fifty. Echo, when did Grand Theft Auto Vice City come out? Thousand two or three. Two thousand two, I was twelve. <laughs> Echo stop. I was seven. Oh my gosh, that's Oh my god, I was 12. My parents let me have that game. I was part of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. The classic old days. You, the water was evil. Yeah. You just walk in the water. Ooh, I'm dead. And you're like, what the oh, fuck? Yeah. <laughs> you went to an island and you can't swim. Yeah, that was so smart. Yeah, also, apparently, Florida is just an island. It's surrounded by yeah, water. Yeah, it's just an island. Same with Liberty City. <laughs> just an island surrounded by water. Can you have you have you ever been there? Can you prove it's not? Uh, okay, I guess you're right. Yeah. <laughs> was it like that in San Andreas? Oh I forget. I don't think so. I think in was it like that? San Andreas. Uh, I think it was an island. I think it was an island. It was it was big. It was it like split into like four areas. Yeah, it was four cities. But, yeah, um, I think it was an island. I'm pretty sure it was. That's just how they decided, you know, you weren't allowed to go out, you know, outside the realm. It was just like, you touch the water, you just die. So that, that avoided players to, like, try and, like, get outside the map or something. Touch the water, yeah. die. Until in the later games, like, you can swim. You're like, woohoo! Yeah, you, you can. You just get mauled by a shark if you go out too far. Oh, shit. Sure. <laughs> yeah. But, um, it's, it's kind of wild how, how far games have come with their, like, size and stuff. What, what game is coming out? There's some game that was just coming out that had some huge map. Um, I, mean, I thought they, they combined. Oh, oh Battlefield! That, or, no, not Battlefield. Yes, no. No. Battlefield? There's something I thought two? that combined a bunch of, bunch of maps. Oh. I, I can't remember. New I can't remember. It's so hard to keep. It's so hard to keep up with games these days. Oh my god. <laughs> That's true. There's a lot of new games coming out. Uh, recently, I think Darkest Dungeon Two just came out. Oh, did it? Yeah. I never. I never. I never got. I never got into that series. A lot of people were telling me. My friend Lapis was telling me about it. That yeah, it's it was very uh, punishing game. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's what I hear. Sits. There's something, something like it came out with a message. It's like, don't, don't feel bad if you fail the first time, or the tenth time, or the hundredth time. Keep grinding, <laughs> or something like that. But 
I'm trying to oh, think yeah. of what was the largest Pretty. game in terms of scale. I don't know, like Arma, I think. In 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 what in what context of what do you mean scale? Like scale size of the map, uh, size or like of the most map. things going on. Si uh, well, I mean, I'm not counting procedurally generated maps. Yeah, not like Minecraft. Um, Those I count. think. I think Witcher. I think Witcher Three has the largest actually made map. Oh shit. Pretty sure Witcher does. Well, I just I can't remember how big it is. The biggest map I ever played big. on was like Arma, like Daisy. Fucking took like two oh, hours oh, just yeah. to walk across and be like, finally, I can, I can <laughs> loot the airfield and just die. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> Gotta respawn to the shore. We we used to play in Derp Company. We used to play all the time Arma Three, and we had like all these mod packs. We'd play as like uh, like contractors and stuff. So we only had like ragtag equipment. We didn't have like you know big military equipment or. Or whatever, and um, the the um, we'd all like load in the back of like you know a Toyota Tacoma, and we'd be sitting there like driving for like 45 minutes to the target just to get immediately annihilated by an AA gun from like three miles away. Like that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the real Arma experience. But um, yeah. I mean, the biggest, I think one of the biggest games I currently play, I still play, I've been playing since the beginning, is Planet Side 2. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever played it. Um, it's still going. The game's been around since, like, yeah, 2000, like 2009, 2010. Around that same time, it's been, or 11. Around that. It's a long, it's been around a long time, and it is still absolutely thriving. It's, um,. It's a map the size of Skyrim. There's multiple content or continents about the size of Skyrim. It's like eight kilometers square. Yeah. And there's three factions on it fighting, and there's like a thousand players on each front, and it's a first-person MMO. It's it, it's wild. There's just there's there's no first-person shooter that can compare to it. I mean, it's not you know it's it looks still beautiful. It to this day it looks absolutely beautiful, and there's no game that can come near its scale. When you're fighting over a map the size of like a football stadium, and there's like 500 people smashed into it, you know, like it's just freaking chaos. It's full full war, you know. There's there's planes. It's it's combined arms, so it's not just you know on foot. You know, there's tanks and planes and mm -hmm. uh, mechanized armored suits and all kinds of stuff going on. And just these entire, you know, that scene in um, Attack of the Clones, Star Wars, where they're fighting on Geonosis. And it's just big open field, and like like the smoke is pouring in, and you're like shooting lasers back and forth through the they're shooting lasers back and forth through the dust storm. It's like yeah. that. It's like oh my god, this is insane. Like none of this is scripted. All this stuff you see going on in the background of like the bullet tracers chasing bombers and shit flying over, just laying everything down, just everything exploding off in the distance. Like that's not scripted. That's not skybox. That's actually happening over there, and it's a free to play game, and like <laughs> it's it's freaking amazing. You start with like the best equipment. It's not pay to win. Like the only thing you should ever buy is like cosmetics. Yeah. I agree. Like everything can just be earned super easy. It, it's like quality. <laughs> it's, it's just nothing comes close. I, it, I wish, uh, I, I really do wish that like games like that would just be VR. Imagine like sticking VR into that game or, or like Jesus or like a medieval game where it's just like a hundred on a hundred and everyone just has swords and they're just and shields and they're just bashing into each other. They're in VR, yeah, and like everyone's like, everyone just like, oh, he fuck off, Connie, oh, he fight. And just like <laughs> smacking each other. Oh, he chopped my arm off. You fucking dumb. Uh, oh. You fucking said what about my mom? And then Get just people, there, and then they're just like, oh, <laughs> and they just throw their swords. And, you know, guys like, dude, stop camping the boat. Oh, he fuck off, mate. Hey, oh, poke your eye out. <laughs> I, I that would be that would be a fun game. Just... That's that's I think that's the most simple. Just make a battlefield like just simple map. Cut, just stick like Mordhai or like Chivalry Two and just stick VR in it, man. That's all you need, man. Just just build that and just have people being silly with like, <laughs> oh, you got two daggers and go, you know, or like, uh, you know, 
Just have the, like, proximity see, chat. See, yeah. I could see like entire groups of like communities getting together to form like actual like you know phalanx lines and shit that yeah. actually do like tactics. Yeah. And then you just got you know Snuffs McGee floating in with like you know running with like a pot on his head, flawless, like running through yeah. the battlefield with a man. Like, a, just like, like just a, throwing like a... random props. Like you just get a crate, you just like ah, just bash on someone's head. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> buy that i'd play that it'd be a great workout i can't wait to just like swing in vr and just take out you know your computer monitor too that that's half the, half the fun is breaking yeah. something in your room I, what have you broken so far you got to have broken something in in, in your time and full body in vr you got a small little play space what have you the, you're you're kind of looking downward and i'm guessing there's a story here broken something uh I mean, I fucked up my controllers, but that was because I was, like, spamming jump too much and I had to RMA them. Like, actually broke oh. something? <laughs> uh, I almost broke my finger by playing Half-Life Alex. Oh, that's, that's, that's probably the closest I've actually broken something. It was my body, not the controllers. Oh, yeah. It's basically, oh, yeah. it's a short story, there's a there's a part in Half-Life Alex where you have to, there's, a, there's, like, a room, and it's locked, and the only way to get in is there's a vent, but you can't climb for it. You just have to chuck a grenade, and then the grenade goes for the vent, goes in, blows up the barricade behind the door. You open it and get your loot. And uh, yep. I live with my parents, and uh, there's a ceiling fan that I have on going on turbo mode just to blow air on me. And I know it's there, but it's I'm just like I'm always like this. My hands are never like above me. So I was like, oh, I'll just quickly do this. And the moment I like put my hand over like this, like my blade, like the blade like chopped into my finger. And I thought I broke my oh. finger. <laughs> Because the blade's going like super fast. I was like, oh, I fell over. And I, I didn't even get the goddamn grenade in the stupid thing anyway. Until until I underhand threw it, you know. That's the way to go. Underhand. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking I, I used to have a, a light, a fan over my head. But it, with other people in VR and me in VR, it kind of hung low. And every time you did anything overhand, you just mangled the poor thing it was the thing was being held together with like three pieces of duct tape and a dream it, it wasn't great so <laughs> i replaced that one with something that hugs the ceiling a lot better but yeah it's not it's not proper vr full body until you hurt yourself that's just that just comes with it you gotta mangle yourself a little bit a little bit I broke yeah. my leg. <laughs> I broke my leg in VR. Really? I think I told you that story though. Yeah. You got like a cast and everything? Like you actually had to go to the hospital? Oh shit. He's breaking up, chat. <gasps> he, he broke his leg. He fucking died. He just he broke himself. Holy shit. Mancy's dead. Well anyway, chat. Um it's been a good time here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Smile. I'm just kidding. We'll bring it back. <laughs> it just probably crashed. Oh, he says he's in here, so... Uh, he's off on my screen. Oh. Um... No, I think you fall on. Cra yeah, Steam crashed. Yeah. Well, anyway, guys, while we have an intermission here and we're waiting, um, just a reminder that we're going to be taking questions from the chat, specifically using SMH Play questions. Uh, if that guy or Loft or someone else wants to write the command for us, thank you. Click that link. Type in your question, your name, and your question. Be specific, either for it's Mansi or myself or both. Um, we'll be taking those questions very shortly. Also, thank you to everybody for following. Thanks so much for the follows. Uh, ACAD the Slay, thank you so much for the host slash raid. I appreciate that. Hero Pablo, Vanille, Tired Alley, No Mar 8, Albi, Albino Wolf, Imposter Hank, Buzz Room 41, Official Cutie. Thanks so much for the raid. That was a while ago, but hey, might as well thank him now. Uh, C Senpai, thank you so much for the sub and. Sin Zindler Man Mar, thanks so much for the tier one. Code reference for the 100 bits. Afi for the sub and everybody else, thank you so much. So, hey, he's joining now. Uh, I just got the invite. But, uh, what do you guys think? You guys in the chat, yo, thanks for the fall. We guys enjoying the show so far? 
Ah, I'm in it. I'm back. Oh shit, dude, you broke, okay. and then and that then you cool. actually that broke. Was... I freaking died again. Uh. Oh my god. <laughs> it's true. Oh my gosh, I, I made it back. Oh, there we go. Not not too bad. My hand won't stop poofing. Oh my god, I can turn off my poof. There, there we go. It, it was meant to be, man. You're talking about breaking yourself. It and was. You broke. I, Literally. It, it, it's it's a feature. It's a feature. It, it told mm -hmm. me, hey. Take a second. Step back. Yeah. Do you uh? Do you have uh? <laughs> the Vive wireless? No, no. It's just, oh, okay. just, uh, just Steam VR being Steam VR. You know okay. how it'd be some days. I've so. interviewed quite a few people that had the Vive wireless, and they're like, "Hey, it's so cool. It's wireless." And then I'm interviewing them, and they just die. Uh, and I'm like, oh, that's happened like three no, times. No, I, I. That is the that is the greatest three hundred dollar paperweight I ever bought. <laughs> What do you mean? Then all the dancers um, use it? I don't know. They're like, ah, oh, look, I can do jumps, do... I can do flips and shit. I'm it's like, oh, nice. It's cool. It's really cool. It's it's really cool. It's just it it's just so touchy and, and, and uh, I, I I'd rather have the stability. I, there's a lot of times where I wish I had it back up and running, but mm -hmm. there's equally as many times where I'm happy I'm not running it. It's also really intensive on your CPU, but. It's there. The concept is there. It's just it was so poorly executed. The the kicker was when they when they first launched it is they never tested it on Ryzen's. So if you had a Ryzen CPU, it just didn't work. It blue screened your computer as soon as you turned what it on fuck? every time. <laughs> if you were lucky, you could get it to last like 15 minutes maybe before your computer just locked up. But They've since obviously patched it, but mm -hmm. the, for like a couple months before that, it just it was just like one of those things where it's like, really, you di you didn't test this on you know one of the major brands of CPUs, like you know. <laughs> nope. GG. Like, Why would we, man? <laughs> Into Why all the way. Ha <laughs> Nah. So yeah, it was that was great. That was cool. But yeah, I know it's it's so finicky. It just wasn't. It's not for me anymore. I get the idea. I think it's really cool. Running mm -hmm. it was great. It's just it's so unstable. But anyway, well, I feel that. Well, anyway, as, I'm, as I I'm was saying, it's as, as I'm saying, it's unstable. As I as I crash and probably just jinxed myself for another crash or something <laughs> random. <laughs> no, while you're anyway. when you're gone, I was basically telling chat that we we're going to be wrapping up. Or well, the next segment of basically taking chat questions and stuff like that. So, because uh, we've been going for an hour and a half, if you didn't know that. Oh, oh, oh my God! Oh, we're over. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 we're not over I time. You, like, I the oh. I go for minimum one hour, max two hours usually, and I usually sometimes go for over two hours. But anyway, um, we'll start oh, taking God. questions from chat here. Uh, or sure. well, the Google document first. Uh, so basically, this is from unlucky listener. Uh. Well, I'm kind of curious. What was the first thing that introduced Mancy into the horror genre? I just, I've always just had a big fascination with, with horror. Um, the idea of being scared, just the, the sensation, the, the, the feeling of just the adrenaline rush of playing horror games. I used to, I mean, back in the day, I remember like when Resident Evil first came out, Resident Evil 2 on the PlayStation, um, all that kind of stuff, playing like old horror games before horror was even a, a genre. There was like, you know, there was like Friday the 13th on the NES and things like that. They weren't really scary. They were just platformers with kind of a spooky boo Halloween theme plastered on it. They weren't really scary. It wasn't until like 3D that horror really started to take off. But just mm -hmm. the the concept of coming into a game and being freaked out from the mis the mystery of it. I remember like having um, game magazines come in, not like Nin like not Nintendo Power. There's like a PlayStation one, you know, and you'd you'd see like the ads on it for like Silent Hill and stuff. And I just remember this is you know this is really kind of pre-internet so there was no way to like look into a game you had the magazine this is all you knew about it you know and you're like looking at the screenshots and like oh this looks this looks creepy why you know why is this why is there you know like a a dog cooked on the table in silent hill 3 or whatever the heck you know and it's i just i don't it, it's it's just like really it just kind of hits into this primal this primal feeling of flight and fright or fight or fright kind of uh experience and i love it i love the the, the rush of, of being terrified 
It's such a good feeling. I mean, I love nightmares. I legitimately love having nightmares. Even if they're, um, really? I don't like real life issue nightmares. Like, you know, like, oh, your mom has cancer or, you know, you got your, you know, you got in a car accident. Like those, those, are, bro. those are fun, but like, yeah, th that'd be t fucking terrifying. Oh Holy my God. shit. <laughs> But nightmare, nightmares where like something's chasing you, something paranormal is going on, something like that. I love those. Like waking up in a sweat and you're just like, that was awesome. <laughs> I'm the opposite. I'm like, but, what the yeah. fuck was that? <laughs> oh, it's okay. I understand though, but yeah, that's that's why I love it. No, you brought up. Uh, I I mean, I'm old enough to know about the the books like uh i mostly had nintendo power but i did have a few like xbox and playstation books and you're right i mean the, the internet was in its infancy this is before youtube i mean google's around but you know like google wasn't yeah. you know it was like random form sites and shit but like how i really found out about games was either from random ass commercials or from nintendo power or or playstation or xbox or like or um my parents, uh, there was a game shop that wasn't wasn't too far away from our house, where uh, you would get a book and then you would get also a demo disc with like ten games on it, and that's oh, the, yeah, yeah. and then I'll be like, yo, what are these games? And it, half the time the games sucked because half of them were just like sports game, like like and like NBA two thousand and one Pro Tour or whatever, and you're just like, what the fuck is this, man? But then you get like, you get like Tony Hawk Underground, and you're like, whoa, dude, what, what is this, yeah. man? Or you, or you get like, I don't know, you get like, um, uh, uh, one of the most like a Metal Gear Solid like demos. Like, what, bro, what, what is this, man? I was like, what the hell? I love, yeah. Those those demo discs are always so cool. I always loved them. I had a I remember I had a couple of them. Uh, a couple of them. I remember there was one. I I don't know why it stuck with me out of all the demo discs I had, but I got it in like a cereal box. I think it was like some General Mills box games or yeah. whatever. The hell. Captain Crunch <laughs> game. I got that. Well, no, 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 not not like not like not. <laughs> <laughs> not like a not like a mascot game. They were like legitimate games. There was like Demonstar, like like a, like a 1944 uh, overhead plane shooter, you know, games like that kind of stuff. Or there was like a like a racing game. There was like there was like Amazon Trail, which was like Oregon Trail, but you're going down like an Amazon. You actually had to like first person go through and like you know manage your supplies like. I don't know. I really love those games. There, there was something just really nostalgic about them, and I just I remember playing the living hell out of them. But okay. yeah, no, I got gotcha. you. It's it's a it's a thing that doesn't really happen anymore. Demo discs aren't really a thing anymore. Like no, yeah. I go, well, it's because it's so easy just to slap stuff on a website and share a link rather than yeah. make physical inventory. Yeah, but those are the days. You wake up. You you see your Nintendo Power Book, you get like a you get like an old demo of it, and you're like, oh shit. Or like you yeah. go to like a convention and they'll give you like a demo of the game. You're like, try this out, and you're like, oh my god. Or I think what was yeah. like the replacement for me was uh, when the 360 came out, and then you would get dem uh, game demos by just going to the marketplace, and they'd be like, try out this game, and you're like, oh shit, Blood Witch, <laughs> or like Blood whatever, or like. Bullet Witch, and you're like, what the hell is this game? You download it, you sit there for like three hours downloading it for your slow ass internet, and then you're just like, finally, and then and then, and then you just play like two levels. You're like, that you was dope, stay away, and then you huh? buy it, and you're like, Keep that was a good game. More, you know, that, that was like the experience. Yeah. Violating yeah. just resubscribed for four months. The be bop. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, next question here. <laughs> From real pop tart meat, are you excited for the metaverse? The metaverse? Uh, I'm not like an expert on explaining the metaverse, but basically, uh, actually, let me just look up the definition. It's basically, from my understanding, it's like, actually, I'm just gonna read the <laughs> the definition of it. Uh, <laughs> define metaverse. I know there's like a VR chat so, metaverse. But there's, I think, is it, is it like the, uh, is it like the song where it's like welcome? No, no, no. Welcome so the, welcome to VR chat, like living in the metaverse, or like kind of. So metaverse, a virtual reality <laughs> space in which users can interact with a computer-generated environment and other users. 
Is it, is it a game coming out, or is that a no? That's just, like the, just the concept. That's of just the con that's just the concept. Metaverse is a broad term. It generally refers to shared virtual world environments, oh. which people can access via the internet. Uh, can be made uh, VR and AR. AR. So like, I, we're we're I'm technically really, in the metaverse right now. If you really think about it. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, like an actual though. Like th I think that's to go back to when we were talking about like MMOs or like, you know, Ready Player One IRL kind of a thing, you know, or SAO. Uh -huh. You know, just the the whole concept of a metaverse is really cool. You know, where you can you can step away from being you know John Smith, the grocery store uh -huh. worker, for a while and be and be Hyun Longsword, savior of Ardania, you know, or whatever the hell, you know, and hang out with your friends and uh, <laughs> and actually be in the game, you know, rather than just sitting in front of a computer. I feel you, but. But yeah, I'm excited for it. I, I think it's going to be really cool. I'm I'm definitely going to be I, whatever it is. I want to be one of the first people in it. That that's basically where I'm at. If there's something that's coming, I want to be in it. So yeah, because when I first heard Metaverse, I heard about like the VR chat version. So I wasn't sure if like there's different descriptions of it, but it just seems like a broad term, as in like you interacting with you know, basically VR chat is just a Metaverse. Yeah. So I was very confused because like. Because on the VR chat wiki, like it, like, it talks about like the metaverse, but I never understood like what that meant. I thought the metaverse was just for role playing and like you know Neon Divide or Fractured Throne or something like that. But no, it seems like metaverse yeah. is just a very broad term for just being in this place. So we are in the metaverse. Um, yeah, a world, a life in a life, basically. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you could say the same thing about like Second Life or World of Warcraft as a metaverse or something like that. In a way. Yeah. Uh, next question we have here. Uh, Zolfix says, does Mancy have cookie clitter open in the background right now? Pretty solid question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's going. <laughs> been getting i've been getting a bunch of people in my community and, and even my wife addicted to cookie clicker because it came out on steam you know so what better time than to rack up a bunch of achievements on your steam account well immediately also getting a bunch of people addicted to clicking a cookie it's it's a lot of fun <laughs> No, I got you. Someone said, uh, my, is there, my poor... this isn't really a question, but it's more of a statement. Is something going on with M Mancy's mic? I don't normally hear that much feedback from his mic. Is there like something playing in the background, oh, like it... a fan? Yeah, I'm sorry. I turned it off. I, oh, I had okay. it on thinking maybe that was, maybe my headset overheated or something. I just thought I'd turn it off. Oh, you had, it off. oh you have like a fan on your, oh, I have one of those on my index. I have a fan on the index. Yeah, yeah same. It's, God, Mine's it's off so right now. Amazing. It's so amazing oh, when, yeah. I'm, when I'm performing, when I'm performing on stage. Like, mm -hmm. oh, it's you. It's so nice to have a breeze run through my face. Yeah, I've used it all for summer. I don't have it on right now because well, it makes sound like it makes like a, like a humming noise. But also, I just have the window open, so it's almost November. So it has like that cold breeze. That's the only thing I like about fall or winter is just the cold air. So I don't have to turn the AC on. I yeah. just open up the window, and it's like cold as fuck, and it just like brushes over my face, and I'm just like, hell yeah! Now I don't have to sweat yeah. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> VR. You gotta come. You gotta come to one of my um, my workout days when I hang out with my friends, like on a Tuesday or Thursday or whatever. We we do uh, workouts, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, we we messed around with the idea of doing hot yoga, where you just you get in VR, you put all your clothes on, and we we work out, and you leave all your windows and everything. You just lock yourself in and get oh, overheat, God. basically. <laughs> How to have heat stroke in VR? Sweat. Yeah, it's a good sweat. <laughs> Probably not great on your headset, but yeah, that's how you break your headset. Yeah, it's it's the funny. moisture in there, <laughs> real good. Yeah, mm. you're thinking like, uh, what's it called? Um, what's it called in real life where you go into a room and like a sauna? That's what I was thinking of. A sauna. Yeah. Yeah, it's basically that, but the the moisture is coming from your body sweat rather than hot rocks. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> Man. All right, chat. Anyway. <laughs> any any more questions, chat? You you can directly type in the chat or using the Google document. This is your time and now to answer Nancy or myself question, or forever hold your peace. You know.
Oh my god. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I got one for you guys. I usually seem to get yeah. this one. How did you two meet? Where did you meet? When did you meet? Oh god. Uh probably in one of the dancing communities. Dirty dancers uh, I, or DVD I, I, VR. I think it was dance uh dance dance VR. DVR. DVR. Yeah. Yeah. I, because I remember I, I joined yeah, off of probably. you to get in there. I was like, watch this place. And you're like, oh, this is Dance Dance VR. And I was like, what the heck? I like, You're like the only person Can I had added. Well, friends you, oh, that's right. So you already knew him? Yeah, so I already have known you. I'm trying uh, to remember now where I met. I don't okay, I if, if, you, it was, if it was prior to that, then... If it was either Kinetic or a public world, then it had to have been at that point. Yes. One of those two. Either a public world or a fruit kinetic. Team kinetic. God, this is so long ago. <laughs> I can't quite remember. Oh my gosh. Let's see if you guys actually remembered. It was that long ago. It was like three plus oh. years ago. Three and a half. I mean, it was so long ago. I feel like it had to be Jeez. either those two things. And man, this, this is why I told the devs of Vyarcha I should be able to like write a note on people's profiles in VR chain, like remind myself how did I meet this person and just have like a every time I click their profile I'd be like oh I met this person doing this notes yeah like a sticky note you can just, do it on yeah. discord pops up and like, oh. excuse me on discord you, you can, can right click on people and add note it only displays it for yourself yeah I wish you could write notes on dis or on games you have on steam as well like if someone gifts you a game you can write you know like gifted by like this, so oh, you yeah. can thank him when you actually freaking play it and like. <laughs> True. Oh, I, I always feel so bad if I if I don't write it down and then forget who gifted a game and then all of a sudden it's there it goes. It's like oh, I was gifted by. I'm pretty sure it was this person, you know, or whatever. But can man see crush my neck with their thigh? A little bit, pretty good. I think I can. Not not too bad. That's where all the strength is, right? <laughs> Uh, have you ever oh had gosh. the PS2 demo disc that wiped your memory cards if you played the botched demo that was on it? No. no. That's terrifying, though. No, I've never done that. <laughs> I fucked up PS that games, would... though. By putting too much cheat codes in them, and then, like, it fucks up the game. Really? Oh, I... I... Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> I used to I used to have all those codes memorized all the all the codes I had a notebook yeah. like, that had like you know like infinite armor infinite health or yeah. not infinite you know full health full, full armor, armor uh, yeah. gun tier one gun tier two gun tier three lose stars raise stars dodo bird sheet cars drive on water like all the ridiculous turn into a random NPC model run around as a grandma I don't even think cheat codes are even a thing anymore in modern games. Not, not really, no. I, what not happened, really, so, dude? So, what happened, man? No cheat codes in games anymore. No Easter eggs. Just microtransactions. What, 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 what happened, yeah. gaming, dude? Well, Easter, Easter eggs are around. There's still plenty of Easter eggs, but I know what you mean. Like, like cheat codes just kind of like poofed out. Every the only way to really get like cheats now is to complete the game. Yeah, yeah, like basically beat the game. Yeah, they'll know, give like, you like, here's a gun with infinite ammo. You're like, okay. Yeah, Thanks. yeah, like like Resident Evil. You know, you beat the game and it unlocks the hardest difficulty, and you also unlock, you know, maybe this gun for your next playthrough or you know, uh, new game plus. Um, play it on the beat it on the hardest. Thing. Dead Space Two is a great example of something that did this. Where right? I don't think there's cheat codes for the game outside of obviously modifying the game, but. If you beat Dead Space 2 on the hardest difficulty, you Hardcore. get a foam finger gun. Yeah, yeah you get a you get a foam finger gun that's pew, a one-hit kill on all enemies. Pew, pew, and he goes, bang, 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 bang. Yeah, I did it on the Xbox yeah. 360. It was so hard. Holy oh, fuck. It was, yeah. I did it, though. I did it, though. My first yeah. save was just before the elevator. The big elevator and you're like and the shit attacks you and like the elevator is like a five minute fight. I saved just before that was oh, my first yeah. save, and then my second one was like chapter like twelve or some shit. So if I died, I had to redo like the whole elevator sequence and all this other bullshit. 
I have, yeah, I have no idea. I've never done it on the hardest difficulty. I don't even know where the hell I would save. I feel like I feel like every save would be a critical save. I feel like oh, here's and it did this die. Really good place to save, but. and it did die <laughs> before getting to that elevator part, and then like it resets the game, and you're just like, oh hey, I'm in the start of the game again. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I did, I that, I did um. The I did Beat Saber the entire um, Shrek movie button Beat Saber. Oh my god, two and, hours! Um, yeah, it's you know, and the thing is, if you fail, you have yeah. to go back to the beginning. So it's like, oh, oh you're 45 god. minutes in, and you're trying to do this part. The don donkey talking was the worst because he talks so fast. He was like, let me tell you something, Shrek. If you ever just like have one of those moments, you're like, ah, ah. <laughs> so cool. And then you fail, and you're like, well, time to start over. There's no saves. Jib Jib says, uh, uh, what do you want to be remembered for if it's different from what you think you'd be remembered for? What do I want to be remembered for versus what I think I'll be remembered for? Yeah. Ooh. My talk show, what so I'll actually be remembered for? Yeah. Uh, my thick thighs. <clears throat> I think I've actually had that thought couple times where it's like where do you see mm -hmm. do you see yourself doing this again in like 20 years or if not what what memory will you have you know what what will basically be remembered and i mean i think really if if i can come in and makes it like in, in what's the word the best way to put it is i was uh, <laughs> I know what I want to say. I'm just trying to word it. Um, when when someone sees you, mm -hmm. the they Jim Carrey, I think, said it the best. That I, I guess I'll quote Jim Carrey. He said, "I've done something that when people come and see me, they express the best version of themselves to me." You know, they 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 give off a positive aura. And therefore, if people are around you or they see you, they have a positive, a positive attitude to themselves. That's really kind of all I want to do is in the end, just make, I want to make people laugh. Mm -hmm. I want to make people laugh. I want to make people happy, whatever way it takes to do that. Um, I love to see people laugh. I love to see people have a good time. And that's that's the best thing I want to be remembered for. I don't want to be, you know, necessarily remembered for being a sexy anime girl. I just want when people see me to be like, that was Manus. I had a good time. I'm going to continue to have a good time. He's a great friend. And I'm a chip. <laughs> and what I think I'll be remembered for, probably the fact I have your name on my butt. But yeah. I can't show it on stream. But I physically have your name. Yeah. On my, your name. Not, not, my name. Not your name. Not my your name. name. My name. Your name. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Totally didn't get that idea from Steve-O like 10 years ago. Steve-O, huh? Jackass? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like I need this tattoo. I gotta get this tattoo sometime IRL of your name on my ass and I never ended up doing it, but I got I got on my avatar finally. People love that joke. I, I, it happens all the time at Phoenix Palace that people always said like, hey, if you're ever feeling down, just remember, Manus has your name on his ass. <laughs> but... Um I think the funny part is I remember people uh, when dancing started taking off in VR chat. It was like that, like uh, people had like their Twitch links on their ass. I remember that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember they had like QR codes or like their their Twitch handle or whatever the yeah. hell on the back of their thigh. It worked. It worked for them because it did. It did. A lot of people got really big. Um, it's not. That kind of scene kind of died. I know my, like, Ron still does it a bunch. But Ron of two I don't ends. see that many people that... Yeah, I don't see too many people that, like, focus on, like, public dancing anymore. Happy? There's a couple. Like, I, Happy does, you know, like, exotic dancing um, in, in public and all that kind of stuff. But it's not, it's not as prevalent as it was, you know, a couple of years ago. Yeah, years ago it was like... 
the first Everyone, time, yeah. yeah, the first time some people were like understanding like what full body was, and you can like do cartwheels and flips and stuff, and people were like, "Whoa, what the?" Because like it's in public, so you can just join and be like, "That's fake on stream," and then you just join the world. And you're like, "What the?" They're actually doing that, you know? It, yeah. it was more like, "Oh shit, that actually is real." Um, yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, obviously nowadays it's less. Well, it's also because the chance of like crashers and stuff is so high that's like, why wh why do all these cool dance flips and then crash halfway through it if you can just go to a private world and sort of dance in front of a mirror and have like cool effects going on? I think I think the dancing public. from like Publix translated to private instances of dancing, but more about visual effects. If you look at like socks VR or um, fluffy VR. People like that have like the visual effects where like it's, I don't know how to describe it, you know, it's crazy shit. Yeah, well the whole, one of the big things of being a content creator is constantly evolving and you can see channels and, and creators that can adapt and those that can adapt. Um, you know, anyone, anyone who wants to be a content creator, you have windows. Doors keep opening, but doors also, you know, they, they don't stay open forever, mm -hmm. you know? Unless you're willing to always advance and move uh, with them, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and that those are good examples where people who, you know, dance, you, you can't keep doing the same, that, that kind of same thing for that long. Mm -hmm. You know, without some kind of a variation, something to keep bringing people back without just, you know, watching the... You can only watch popcorn pop for so long, you know? True. Honestly, if that makes sense. So that, no, I get what you're saying. That's that's literally content creation in a nutshell. Like, how long can you play con the same game over and over again? It's yeah. insanity, you know? Content, yeah. content creation, success in general. Um, I'm by no means the most successful person on Twitch or anything like that. Um, but success, people focus i think a lot um and not just on twitch uh twitter you know so many people are focused on numbers and you know success stories where they you only ever see the tip of the iceberg you know yeah. you only ever see um the 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 highlight reel if you will of people's stories and this this leads to a lot of people feeling discouraged uh they don't see behind the scenes they don't know what some of these people are have going on in their life behind the scenes or how many how many years like i said i've been content creating for over 15 years you know so if someone comes to me and says oh i wish i was you you're so lucky you know you're able to do this and have this community it's like i've i've performed and made a million videos to zero views you know i've failed and rebooted three times you know you know the same you know the same story you know you you fail to be successful you have to fail than most people are even willing to try and i mean that that goes for a lot yes, of things uh, in life you know that not just not yeah, not just content creation, you know, there's nothing stopping anyone from being the next Mr. Universe. There's nothing stopping anyone from, you know, you want to go be the next big VTuber. There's nothing physically stopping you from doing it. It's just, you have to be willing to put in the time, the effort, the failing, everything, you know. It's a long, long road. <laughs> And, you know, some people, some people might be able to have moments of opportunity and preparation that meet where, you know, in the first year, you know, all of a sudden you see some people where they, they start streaming in three weeks, they have partner, you know, or. Yeah. Yeah. But for the majority of us, we have to, you got to do the grind. You got to, you got to work hard. It's, it's a hard, long grind, but it's, it's a, it's a journey. It's it's not about getting there, or it's about getting there, not about you know get, being there. If that makes sense, enjoy it. It's a journey. It is. It is, and I, I love it. I love the journey. It's been one hell of a journey. I can't wait to see what happens within the next years, in or out of you know content and all that kind of stuff. And I hope to be there, and I, I hope more people will be there. It's gonna be wild. I agree. Yeah. Well spoken, honestly. Wow. Jeez. Um.
Do you have any uh, any questions for me? We're gonna be wrapping up in the next minute or two. Ah, oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh my gosh. No, like me to you? Yeah, you to me. Oh, okay. That's kind of a hard one because like I said, we've, we've had so many like just conversations where it's like, man. Doing a uh, reversal card. Now you're the interviewer. God damn. Uh, you don't have to. I guess, I mean, I mean, well, no, I mean, like, I guess the big one that I was, you know, because I've, I've known you for probably longer than not as K Kona brother, you know, running around yeah, is yeah, all brother. that. What was, what, what was the, what was the big, the big reason to, to swap? Because I know for a long time, I, I'm pretty sure that was you that said things like, oh, you'll never catch me as an anime girl, brother. I'm going to get all these waifus and collect them like Pokemon cards and make anime girl uh, uh, calendars and stuff. I was role-playing. <laughs> That's the short answer. Gotcha. The, the, lo the, lo the, the, longer, the longer answer... You had a burning it, desire. <laughs> no, it was. It's a lot more. Uh, how do I word this? There's a multitude of reasons why I did it. Um, I'd said this story before, but I'll reiterate. Um, when I was playing as that character, I was role playing. A lot of people probably didn't realize that. I'm not even American. I'm actually Canadian. I was just playing on a character because I didn't want to be myself. I thought myself was boring, so playing a character makes it more interesting. The problem is I'm a one-dimensional character that has one very silly goal. But um, after a year of doing that character, I'll never forget it. I've said this story many times. Where uh, I draw off a group of friends, and they're typically in front of a mirror. And I was just like, hey, guys, what's going on? And I'm talking like this. Not with, uh, not with the accent, but with the, with the avatar. And everyone's like, oh, hey, what's up, dude? And then one person's like, hey, why aren't you doing the accent, man? Or doing the character? Why aren't you, why aren't you doing the Kenny voice? And I was just like, well, I just want to chill, dude. And they're like, uh, uh, oh, sorry, that's what I said to them. I just want to chill. And the guy's like, then why are you here? I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, if you're not doing the character, then why are you here? I was just like, what the fuck? Oh. So so it made me start thinking, you know, and, and it's the same thing that happened to other other people, or other interactions where like I would not do the character for for you know five ten minutes, and then people were like, dude, you ruined you ruined the bit, or like, oh, you know, why didn't you be the Kenny character? Do you, do the do the funny thing, say the funny line, bro. It's like dance monkey dance, do the things that make me laugh. So yeah. when, when I got that going on, I was like, well, I don't want to do the, the character anymore. Um, that was like probably one of the bigger reasons for it. There's other like minor reasons, like for example, when I uh, when I got the avatar made by JJ, I had a male. This is the female version, but I had a male uh, version of it made. And when I used the male version, which is I basically modeled off or after like a better version of myself IRL. Like I don't, I can't really grow like a full beard IRL, but in the VR version I could, you know, muscles, whatever. And whenever I'd use that better version of myself, I started having like that sort of like uh, body dysphoria where I was like, why can't I be cool like this character? Why can I not look like that IRL? Because I base it off my real life mm -hmm. self, which is not what you're supposed to do. <laughs> but you know, when it, it when, was, but that's oh, what I felt oh, keep like. Going, keep going. That's that's what I felt like um, when using that avatar. So I was just like, wow, I don't even like this avatar because it's just a better version of me. I don't like the fact of people telling me what to do and being like, oh, why are you here? Do do the do the joke for me because it's funny, you know. Um, and it never did any real favors for my own channel. Um, other people's channels would benefit from from me doing the character. But when I did it to my own stream, nobody gave a shit. Or like no, nobody from those like channels came to my channel to watch me. So I was kind of just like doing it for other people. Like I was a good side character for everybody else, but I wasn't really, it didn't benefit from my own channel. And I was like putting all this effort into something and reaping nothing out of the benefits. Yeah. Um, and then eventually I was just like, fuck it all. I'm just gonna go on this grand crusade of trying to collect all these anime waifus. And I did, I streamed the whole thing, got 151, just like Ask Ketchum in season one of Pokemon, except for Pokemon, it was waifus. And then I decided to make yeah. up this lore about how I got all these waifus and the waifus betrayed me. And then I 
got anime girlitis and became an anime girl. So I'm still technically Kenny K. Kona just as a female learning how to adapt to being an anime waifu in this world. That's why I have the same voice. Yeah. yeah okay. I, I see. Yeah. Okay. I and see. I also got I thick it. waifu syndrome, which is TWS, which is uh, when you uh, when you look down, you can't see your anime, you can't see your feet because you have giant personalities. Oh yeah, too much personality and yeah. plot. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the real reason. That's actually really. That's really interesting though, because I remember having a discussion uh, a while back, like almost like a deep conversation, where. It was when you're in specific avatars, yeah. you have you, it, you have a different mindset. You can change mindsets basically <laughs> based on what you look like. Yeah, I believe. You it. know, even just what you're wearing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you you run around as a big bulky guy, you know, you'll feel you're mentally feel different rather than running around as an anime girl. If you're wearing something more skimpy, you'll feel more. You know more emotion that you want that feels more skimpy whether it be, uh, you know i feel more cute or i feel more more sexy more, more skimpy outfits i really i feel uh really uh cute right yeah. now you know yeah but it, it there's just uh, just pay attention to it or pay attention on yourself just how physically or mentally you feel different depending on what you're wearing or where you are, where you are, or anything like that. You know, your scene and your your um, the way you present yourself mm -hmm. is a big change over how you act. It's the same reason. It's the same reason why they why they say um, for people that are getting over depression or um, that want to get over depression or anything like that is make sure that you physically take care of yourself. Make sure you stay properly shaved, properly bathed. You know, stay clean. Um, make your bed put on clean clothes all that kind of stuff because this this outward representation of yourself is absolutely mental towards yourself um if you go around you know you don't take care of your body you you kind of let yourself go you don't care um it runs on you mentally it, it's a proven fact it it's quite wild so if there's you know anyone looking to make a positive change on their life is definitely take care of yourself physically yeah, I agree. and you mentally it, it, it helps very far mentally it's not the be all and end all but it's a big factor yeah it makes sense to me let me just uh do a quick check here no i think we're good um i think it's time to wrap up i'll just check in if we had any other questions in the google document um, okay, bye forever. <laughs> bye forever. <laughs> oh, fuck. Well, anyway, uh, do you have any closing statements? Anything uh, going on? You know, like, hey, I'm going to stream tomorrow or something like that. Anything you want to shout out? Tell people. <laughs> Oh hell yeah! I um I've been it's it's Spooktober it's October it's my favorite month obviously being a, a, a horror enthusiast, mm -hmm. um. Uh, so this whole month has been absolutely I mean I always play scary games but it's been a lot more spooky themed. Um, our community nights are every Wednesday in my Discord where we have you know 20, 20 plus people at any time that are sitting in the call with me watching a movie. We're watching The Grudge tomorrow, which is going to be really exciting. Um, we were watching a bunch of. Uh, slashers we watched the new Hall halloween kills movie mm -hmm. last wednesday we play games and all that with the, the community and it's super super active always over there um saturday i'm gonna i got dead space up and working finally oh my god they got back to me and got me a new code for ea being ea but um I got that going, actually, speaking of, I plan to do a pistol-only run of Dead Space 2 starting Saturday on stream. Those are the big ones um, on my on my Twitch and in my Discord, so it's going to be exciting. Nice. Heck yeah. And then uh, Dead Guy's linking your Twitch in my chat as well for anybody from my community or any else just personally just watching, wants to check out Mancy. Uh, stream yeah. some Dead Space, some other games, join all those community stuff. But uh, I think. Uh, all my, all my, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say all my, all my, uh, all my channels all have different content. So my Twitter has a bunch of exclusive content. My YouTube, so it's kind of like everything offers its own little, 
Nice. Its own little bit of the madness. That's pretty great. So, but yeah. Heck yeah. Well, again, thank you so much for tuning in for this interview. Hope you guys enjoy it. It'll be on YouTube within uh, the next two days and 48 hours, if anyone who watches on YouTube. And again, uh, check out Mancy. It's M-A-N-I-C-E-O-8. Go check him out. Hit him up with the Twitch Prime. Follow. It's free. Uh, join their Discord. Have a fun time. They love horror games, so if you're someone who's interested in horror games, then watch them scream and shout and have a fun time. But anyway, uh, you know, I've been... My name is Dawn Rebel. Again, if you haven't already, hit the follow button. I do interviews once in a while. Tomorrow's my next interview with Miyoshi at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Go check it out. Uh, literally in 22 hours from now. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. And I'll see you guys later. Peace. Buy it in the merch store. Buy it in the merch store. Sell this. I will sell this one day, actually. <laughs> Oh, you can't throw it. Oh. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> My immersion. Well, uh, if you can My stick immersion. around for one minute, because we'll take a photo um, after. Because I'm going to raid somebody right now. Do you have any recommendations who I should raid? Or I just typically just go for, like, who I follow slash VR chat list. Oh, I, I have no idea who's on right now. I don't have Twitch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Make it look. Slap your head.